the Southampton Town Board to order on this 23rd day of May 2023. Please rise if you're able and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let me ask that you remain standing and join with us in a moment of silence. Um, we typically start our meetings with a, a moment of silence in honor of all the men and women of our armed services who bravely defend us each day at home and around the world. Um, but this is a special meeting because it's the last town board meeting before Memorial Day. And we're reminded of those who paid the ultimate price defending our freedom. So. Um, but I, I also, uh, in this moment of silence, I also want to add the memory of the wife um, of our former highway superintendent, Bill Masterson. His wife, Laura Gilmartin Masterson, died on May 12th uh, at the age of 79, peacefully and surrounded by family. Um, they were married 56 years. Um, she was uh, the mother of three children, Kathleen, William, and Ellie grandmother of Patrick and Teague. Um, she was an active member of the Southampton community for many years, also senior deputy clerk in the Suffolk County Clerk's Office. Um, more recently, uh, she committed her uh, efforts to her Florida community at the Mariner Sands. Um, uh, she, here she loved Cooper's Beach, and there she loved to play uh, golf at Mariner Sand. And, um, Playing golf, apparently, and the occasional hole-in-one kept an infectious smile on her face. So she will be forever missed and remembered by uh, her family as a fun-loving, ready-to-go, always-dressed-up, beautiful mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, friend, and wife. So in with her memory and our thoughts and prayers for the family, as well as, again, uh, our armed services and those uh, particularly who paid the ultimate price, uh, let's join together in silence. Thank you. Please be seated. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Supervisor Schneiderman. Present. Councilwoman McNamara. Present. Councilman Martel. Present. Councilman Bouvier. Here. Councilman Stevens. Present. All right. So we have a busy night before us. I'll try to get everybody home in time to watch the NBA Finals. I think it's what, Heat and Celtics tonight? Game yeah. four. All right. Um, and there will be some additional resolutions we'll add on. Um, we have some uh, distinguished guests with us tonight, so um, let's, uh, let's start with that. Um, we have uh, um, some talented young men um, who are members of the South Southampton Mariners varsity basketball team. They include senior guard Derek Reed, number three, who this season scored more than a thousand points. <laughs> or, well, well, he scored not this season. Well, not, it's, I think it's over his high school career, right, Herman? Yeah, over his high school career. That would be impressive to do it in one really season. <laughs> that's unfortunately what it says here, but I, I knew that couldn't be right. Um, this, that's a phenomenal feat for any high school player. Um, even though Southampton has had the history of producing fine players and others who have hit that thousand mark, um, uh, the previous season, LeBron Napier uh, achieved the same milestone. Is really his name is LeBron? Uh, it's like no surprise, right? No. <laughs> you name your kid LeBron, he better be good at basketball. LeBron. <laughs> All right. So Derek uh, only played six games due to the shortened pandemic season. His first year on the varsity uh, on varsity as a sophomore, he played 22 games his junior year um, and hit a thousand points in his 21st game his senior year. Wow. Um, that's 1,001 career points in just 49 games an average of just over 20 points per game. My, outs, uh, um, my understanding is that is the fastest anyone has done it in Southampton history. Correct, Herm? Okay. Um, the team had an undefeated league. 
uh, season streak. Uh, the Mariners won 11 straight victories between January 10th and February 28th. They are um, Suffolk County Class B champions. They are Suffolk County Small School champions. They are Long Island champions. And they are New York State Class B semifinalists, which is really impressive. So let's run. <laughs> Derek, stand up. Which one of you is Derek? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. All right. Look out, NBA. He's coming. Um, we do have a proclamation, and then I want to invite Herman up to say a few words there. Coach, um, so I'm not going to read all of this, but l let me start here. Um, after an undefeated league season marked by the Mariners' textbook um, execution of their vaunted run and jump press, the team entered the East Hampton High School gym to face Sag Harbor's Pearson High School in the Suffolk County BCD games. Don't listen to this, Pearson folks. <laughs> South, Southampton harpooned the whalers. Oh my God. Southampton harpooned the whalers. <laughs> Who writes this? <laughs> Southampton harpooned the whalers early on, taking a 37 to 24 lead just before halftime. The Mariners grew it to 28 points going into the fourth quarter and held a 69 52 edge in the, at the final buzzer. The win was their third over the Sag Harbor opponents that season. And whereas facing Suffolk County Class A champion Kings Park in the small schools championship at Longwood High School, the Mariners trailed in the first half but exploded in the third quarter. Southampton's 58-49 victory clinched their first Suffolk County small schools title since 2017. And whereas at the Long Island championship held at Hofstra University, Southampton and the Ma and and the Malvern Mules were separated by just a point with a little more than four minutes to go. The Mariners sailed to a 63 to 49 victory and their first Long Island title since 2017. Additionally, Southampton also battled class AA champion Brentwood in the overall section 11 championship, won the New York State Class B regional semifinal and closed out Valhalla High School 64-55 to capture the state Class B regional final at Eastport South Manor High School in Manorville. And uh, whereas after a 23-year absence, the Mariners returned to Glens Falls to face the Crusaders of Catholic Central High School at, um, at Cool Insuring Arena for the New York State Class B semifinal. The last time a Southampton team made it that far and won was during the 1999-2000 season. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Southampton hereby joins with the students, staff, and residents of the Southampton Union Free School District in honoring the Southampton Mariners. All right. So I, we're going to present, give this to you guys. I, maybe you can frame it and put it up at the school. Sounds good. Um, and uh, Herman, you want to come over forward and accept this on behalf of the team? Coach Lavinson, Detective Lavinson. Congratulations. All right, I'll get this. Good evening to everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Supervisor Schneiderman for having us here along with the rest of the board. Uh, just really like to say that these group of kids are a real special group of kids and uh, it's nice to be able to stand here before you to present them to you as champions and uh, it's something that they'll always be able to cherish and hold on to for the rest of their lives and uh, build upon it. Again, thank you. Thank you. We're going to let you go home, and maybe after you finish your homework, you can watch the game, okay? <laughs>
Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thanks for coming. Congratulations, guys. Good luck on, on the Regents. Okay, so while they're exiting, let me see if we can walk on a few resolutions. Yeah. All right. Um, so this is to add on to our agenda. We got 43178 appoints uh, James Cappers to Water District Superintendent in Hampton Bays Water District. Uh, 43360 promotes Police Detective Carter Coleman to rank of Sergeant in Southampton Town Police Department. 43361 promotes Police Officer David <coughs> Peters to rank of Sergeant in Southampton Police Department. 43362 promotes Sergeant uh, William Kiernan to rank of Lieutenant in Southampton Police Department. 43439. Um, which is a uh, uh, sponsor. Can we uh, handle that one separately? That's right. going to be withdrawn. Yeah, we're right. going to leave that one. Just off. leave it off. Oh, we're going to leave that one off? Yeah. Walk on packet? Yeah, yep. correct. Um, okay, that was a special events one. All right, 43446, uh, which is uh, sponsored by uh, Councilman Bouvier and co sponsored by uh, Councilman Schiavone. Uh, authorized the supervisor to sign documents for the transfer of sanitary flow credits as it relates to the affordable housing site plan special exemption for. 3310-331 on Noyak Road, LLC. Uh, 43455, we're calling amends Town Board Resolution 537 of 23, authorizing expenditures for a restricted account for the Windsor Heart Project. And 43458 is our 10th warrant. So there were seven resolutions. We didn't do the one that is number five there. So I, I'll make a motion to walk on all those seven resolutions. Second. Uh, seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we can take those up later on. Okay. Um, next, I'd like a, to make a motion to approve the minutes of our town board meeting of May 9th, 2023. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye approved. Um, next, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of our Hampton Bays Water District Commissioner's meeting, May 11th of 2023. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martell. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, would you please read the communications? Oh, oh we want to, oh, wait, hold off one second. Before you do that, I don't want to keep our tax receiver here any longer, though, you, though you, you're welcome to stay if you want, <laughs> if you want to. Do you want to go first? Or do you want? Yeah, I would like to do the first. Okay, so uh, Teresa Kiernan, our tax receiver, is here. It must be that time of year again, I suspect. So. It is. Good evening, everyone. A very brief statement about property taxes. The deadline, as always, is Wednesday, May 31st. Um, we have extended hours in my office on Saturday, May 27th. We will be open from 9 a.m. to noon. And on Wednesday, May 31st, we're open from 8.30 a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. Um, our banking partners also accept payments only for a second half. If you're paying your full bill, you have to come to the office. Uh, but Dime Bank and M&T Bank, if you have your bill with your coupon, they will accept your second half payment. The town website is an excellent resource, so please visit southamptontownny.gov and click Pay Your Taxes. You can view, print, and or pay your tax bill online. Um, of course, we will all be closed on Monday, May 29th for Memorial Day. And if there's any questions or any, we can answer any question or any issue that comes up. 631-702-2470 uh, is the phone number for my office. And I think that's all I need to say. <laughs> any questions from anyone? If you pay by credit card, is there a surcharge? So yes, there are fees that apply. If you use the website or call, even if you call us on the phone, you can pay on over the phone and we charge the same fee. It's two and a half percent for a credit or a debit card. We treat it as a credit card. And if you're using your checking account and pay by electronic check, it's $1.75. Okay. Um, Any other And questions? now they're due by the 31st. Is there a grace period? There is no grace period. So May 31st is a hard and fast deadline. Um, after that, taxes go to the county. 
We do accept postmark, so if you mail your taxes on May 31st and you have a valid postmark from the U.S. Postal Service, that is also considered on time, regardless of what day it gets to us. We also do offer a short extension for senior citizens who are waiting for their Social Security to come, like probably early June, they will get their next Social Security payment. So they get a little bit of an extension. They have to have a senior exemption on their property or establish that they're a senior and waiting for Social Security, and then we can give them a couple of extra days. I don't know what the actual date is right now for Social Security being paid, but... Um, and, and late payment is subject to fairly substantial penalties. Yes, it's 10 and a quarter percent if you miss the May 31st date, and it has to go to Suffolk County rather than coming to the town hall, so... You have to pay that not, right in Riverhead, right? It's not pretty, County yeah. Uh, they have a nice website, but it's not nice. No. <laughs> not as nice as ours. No. <laughs> Okay, any, any other, other questions? questions? Yep. Okay. All right, thank you. I'm actually going to stay and stick around for the CPF. Uh, okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, so um, we'll do communications next, Madam Clerk. The following communications have been received in the office of the town clerk. We have received public notices from the town of Riverhead, New York State Liquor License 30-Day Advance Notice to Local Municipality from the listed applications, financial disclosure statement filings from the listed individuals. We have also received emails and letters, correspondence regarding the following. Bel Air Cove, 20 Shinnecock Road, Hampton Bays, Central Pine Barrens Commission referral comments regarding the Riverside Sewer District, Margeson Street Parcel, Seg Harbor, Proposed Community Park in Spionk, Proposed Sewage Treatment Facility, Bowers Lane, Southampton, Town Board Resolution 2023-666, High Deck Engineering. We have also um, bids and requests for proposals from May 10th for 2023 Silverado 1500 Crew four-wheel drive for the Bay Constables. And that concludes the communications for this meeting's agenda. Okay. So, um... Today's town board meeting is a hybrid town board meeting. We started these procedures during the pandemic and luckily that's for the most part behind us, but we found that it allowed people greater access to local government. We live in a town where geographically it's a pretty large town. It's not easy for people to always get here and traffic can be also um, a, uh, a barrier in people with physical challenges. Um, so we um, always take comments from the, the audience here at Town Hall first, but then we will go to our screen here, and if people want to comment either at public hearing or in, at the public portion, uh, they can do that from lo remote locations. Um, if you're going to speak at the public hearing or um, at the uh, public portion, we do ask you to fill out a card. Um, so if, uh, if you haven't already done so, please do that. All right, um, Madam Clerk, would you read the first public hearing notice? Public hearing number one for enforcement action at 1 Squires Pond Road, Hampton Bays, Suffolk County Tax Mac number 900 175 for unsanitary condition water supply. All right, and Sean Cambridge, uh, Assistant Town Attorney, will present. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Good evening, uh, members of the board. Uh, this is for an enforcement action for a water supply line that has burst. Um, Hampton Bay's Water District has shut off that supply line for the time being. I would recommend to the board um, that we keep this hearing open and adjourn to the 6-13-23 meeting um, where the resolution is on. Um, the town attorney's office did mail out another notice today. This could be a pretty expensive job. This could be five to $10,000, and neighbors are reporting that this homeowner may be living in some type of assisted health care facility at this time. So uh, rather than blind somebody with an expensive work order, um, the water district and public safety have acted pretty quickly to shut this water supply off. This is a problem, but it's not an imminent problem. Um, I'd recommend hearing this on the 6-13-23 meeting, um, and then the town board can act accordingly if necessary. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, so let's go to the public. Um, just on this first hearing, which is very specific to one particular home and a first water line, water feed. Does anybody want it to be heard on this? Teresa? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I hear from this resident frequently in my office. She is actually in an assisted living 
a facility up the island somewhere and she also is in touch frequently frequently with the police department so we are in communication she's definitely not living at the home right now and having some health issues that's okay, definite good. is it vacant now is, is, is there's there's no one living there she she calls the police department um thinking that someone's squatting but my understanding is there's no condition there for even a, a squatter to try and i'm going to make you just identify yourself oh sorry <laughs> Teresa kiernan town tax receiver okay Thank you. Just for our That's reference. it. I just want to confirm that that is correct. Oh, okay. Um, all right. And, and nobody, she me no, <laughs> nobody else uh, from the audience. Um, yeah, I only do that for the minutes. Um, okay. The um, at home or remote audience, Charles. So if you're watching this meeting and you want to speak at the per first public hearing related to One Squires Pond Road enforcement action, you need to click the raise hand icon, usually on the bottom of your screen. Um, do that now, and we will bring you in. See no hands. All right, I will make a motion then to adjourn this to June 13th meeting. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you read the second public hearing notice? Public hearing number two, to consider the acquisition of lands of K4K LLC located at 381 Flanders Boulevard, Flanders, and amend the CPF management stewardship plan to include the property. All right, thank you. Uh, Jacqueline Fenlin, our CPF program manager, will introduce this. Uh, good evening, Mr. Supervisor and town council members. It's nice to see you tonight. Um, we are here to consider the possible acquisition of K4K LLC, which are the purported owners of 0.2 acres. This is uh, land located at 381 Flanders Boulevard, and you can see it right here on the map. Uh, this is, um, they have expressed interest in selling the property for $20,000. Uh, a home can actually not be built here. This would only be utilized for development rights. And as you can see in the light green, um, it is surrounded by existing publicly owned lands. Um, and then the middle portion there is actually a private road, which would never be opened. And then the more aqua uh, blue color is actually uh, DEC freshwater wetlands. Can I ask a question? Are we buying, in this case, the fee and the development rights? Yes, yes, we're buying so fee. Full, mm -hmm. full fee. Full fee. Full so, fee. Full fee. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the price obviously sounds cheap, but it's small and it's undevelopable. So yeah, because it would be a fraction of a development right. So, so the de benefit is that they're not going to use that development right somewhere else. Correct. And also it would give us management control Correct. of the land so somebody can't start parking vehicles or whatever. Correct. camping there or whatever it is and saying it's private property yes. and we own everything around it correct or yes as well as the county the county the does. town and the county okay any other questions for miss Fenlon okay um, <coughs> public hearing number two is there anyone in our town hall audience that wants to be heard at public hearing number two regarding that postage stamp size property over there uh, that we'd be acquiring all right uh, we'll go online uh, Charles do we have anybody with a raised hand icon no sir all right um, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing Second. seconded by Councilman Bouvier all in favor aye. Aye. aye aye all right the hearing is closed we'll move on to public hearing number three uh, Madam Clerk public hearing number three to consider the adoption of the 2023 CPF pilot plan Okay, um, so uh, Jacqueline Fenlin, uh, RCPF program manager, will introduce this. I, I'll just say that this is the, not the new program, right? This is the Correct. old program, which there are, program. there are four communities that benefit from this, if I recall, or five, it's four, right? It's Hampton Bays, yep. Eastport, East Quag, and Riverside. Flanders Riverside. Yeah, Riverside. Flanders, Riverside. Flanders Riverside Riverhead School District. Riverhead. So there's and four Lizard school district. districts, and in those four districts, properties that were taken off the tax rolls for preservation by either the county, town, state, or federal government, mm -hmm. we make up the taxes that were lost by the school and sometimes the fire departments and ambulance, right? Correct. Yeah, this and would libraries. be to make up and for libraries. the 
yeah, to okay. make up for the revenue that was lost through preservation through any state or municipally owned property. Right, and yeah. the reason why those districts are the recipients is because that's how the state law is written. Correct. And it originally started out as lower census track, Pine Barrens areas, lots of open space. And we are looking at the state recently amended the program and other districts right. may qualify. So, but did um, I probably stole your thunder? Is there anything else you want to say? <laughs> A little bit, it's okay. Um, I just wanted to pass out uh, the table for the okay. projected evidence. Um, but yes, you summed it up nicely. This is um, to reimburse the school districts and uh, public entities. Uh, we are currently looking at uh, this for the 2022 and 2023 year pilot payment. So uh, this would be um, to offset any taxes that were lost through the preservation, uh, CPF as well as state, county, and uh, town owned lands. Um, so currently this exemption would be going to the Riverhead School District, Riverhead Library, Hampton Bays School District, Hampton Bays Library, Eastport South Manor School District, Eastport South Manor Library, East Quag School, East Quag Library, um, district and Riverhead Fire, Flanders Fire, Northeast Quag Fire Protection, and the Northampton Ambulance. Uh, I want to say one or two more things, and then maybe we can read read some numbers. So, this program A is capped. We can't spend more than 10 percent of this prior year CPF dollars on this program, but we're not up to that 10 percent. We are not right the, now. The other thing I want to say is under the law. We are not obligated to spend a dollar on this program. We don't have to give the schools and libraries a penny of CPF. And I know East Hampton, though they're thinking about doing it now for the first time, for all the years has not been doing it for, for their school district that qualifies. But we have been doing it. So I, I just want people to understand what this means. So for... Um, Hampton Bay School, it's a million dollars. Am I reading this correct? One point yes. one. Um, one point. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, where are you seeing one point one? I see uh, that. As, I see. I'm seeing okay. one point oh five. But oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, call my bad. For this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for the Riverhead School, one point eight million dollars mm -hmm. in CPF dollars. That's money collected from property transfers that we're able to give to the school to make it so that they don't have to increase property taxes on their residents. So uh, it, it's been a very successful, this program. And th there's, lots of, uh, there's lots of other numbers here. Um, <coughs> East Quag, Quag School, 1.2 million. It's a lot of money. I was on the school board when we got Fred Thiel to put East Quag on and it made a huge difference. It was literally the turning point for our school to basically get back on track with not cutting staff and teachers and programs. So, yeah. so total, total, of, total of $4.6 million basically being distributed right. to schools and libraries and firehouses and ambulance, one ambulance, uh, Northampton Ambulance. Yes. So uh, it's a great program. All right, anybody have any questions about it? Just that uh, this is for 22-23. Yeah, this, uh, the new statute would be subject to a separate hearing, Yes. Uh, which we've been right. meeting. So I just wanted to alert schools that are, yes. are wondering this, this yeah. is not that. Okay. Correct. 2022 to 2023. You know, and, and sometimes you hear within some of these areas, don't take properties off the tax rolls. Um, and un understand that if CPF does buy it, um, we do our best to reimburse some of the entities particularly the school for it though at some point there may not be enough some point and hopefully we'll still preserve some lands even after that point so. yeah. okay all right thank you yeah thank you all right we'll go to the um, town hall audience is there anyone who wishes to be heard on the CPF pilot program Okay, we'll go to our um, Zoom audience, our remote audience. Um, if you want to be heard on the CPF pilot program, which is public hearing number three, please click the raise hand icon. I see no hands. Okay, um, Jackie, we don't need to leave this open for any reason, right? Teresa, no? It's, oh, 
Okay. Um, I'll, I will make a motion to close public hearing number three. Second. Uh, seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. All right. Uh, closed. All right. We'll move on to public hearing number four. Madam Clerk, would you read the hearing notice? Public hearing number four to consider amending section 6.5 penalties for offenses of Southampton Town Code chapter 164 fire prevention in order to increase penalties and add a mandatory surcharge. All right, Sean Cambridge, Assistant Town Attorney, will present. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, hello again, everyone. Uh, this is a pretty simple, straightforward amendment. Um, currently, the Fire Prevention Code says it's $250 fine for a first offense, $500 for a second, and $1,000 for a third. Uh, we like to move away from determinate sentences. The function of a judge is to have discretion and sentence people accordingly. So instead, we've written in a range not less than 150 and not exceeding 1,000, which is the statutory maximum. Um, further, we've increased parking in a fire zone in this draft from 50 to $100. Um, a tow truck has to physically come out and tow somebody. Um, in this instance, you're not getting a tow truck there for $50. Uh, $100 is a little more practical. Uh, lastly, we've added a surcharge of $100. Um, and the reason for that is parity with the rest of our town local law offenses. Um, the optics of this right now, um, because fire codes are primarily enforced against commercial structures, a homeowner can leave justice court with a higher fine than a business um, for doing kind of similar offenses. Uh, we want the fine structure to be comparable for a business and for a homeowner. Um, same types of offenses. In some instances, a fire prevention code offense may be more serious than not getting a building permit or something to that effect. Um, so we want the fine structure for all of our offenses to look the same. Uh, that's what this proposed amendment does here. Um, the surcharge may seem a little st steep to people, $100 surcharge after being convicted. That is important though. That money, a surcharge goes back to the town. So that money goes into the blight mitigation fund that is used for your community. Um, where otherwise fines, um, penalties imposed by a judge are split between the state and several other administrative agencies. Surcharges, uh, again, we've added them to the rest of our local laws. They go back to your community. They pay for cleanups. They pay for um, beach restorations, so on and so forth. Um, are there any questions on this proposed amendment? So just give me a, a sense of some of the things that will affect what type of fire code? Uh, smoke detector violations, um, public assembly permits, people that fail to apply uh, for permits for things like welding, um, people that operate cement saws indoors, very dangerous behaviors that we want to deter, things of that nature uh, that the fire marshals are out patrolling for and being dispersed to calls for. Okay. Um, any other questions for Mr. Cambridge? Nope. Thank you. All right, we will go to, uh, I guess, first the town hall. Anybody wishing to be heard? Okay, uh, online. Anybody online viewing today, tonight's meeting who wishes to be heard at public hearing number four? No, sir. All right, I'll make, uh, well, Sean, we don't need to leave this open, correct? All right, I'll make a motion to close public hearing four. Second it. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The hearing is closed. We'll move on to public hearing number five. Sunday. Public hearing number five for supplemental funding for WQIP of Alewife Creek Stormwater and Restoration Project. All right. Uh, our CPF program manager, Jack Jacqueline Fenlin, will introduce us. Yes, good evening, Mr. Supervisor and Town Council members. This is for um, additional funding and allocation for an existing water quality project. Uh, this is a fist passage that goes under Noyak Road, so you can see it right here. Uh, so if you're familiar, coming up north, uh, North Sea Road, when you take that right-hand turn to go continue on to Noyak Road to the east, uh, there is an existing culvert here which is not passable for uh, ale wafe and any um, other fish. Um, so we are looking to uh, fund additional um, account uh, amount of $200,000. <coughs> the project was approved for water quality funding in 2019 by resolution uh, 2000, uh, 2019 1007. They did get funding of $410,000. Um, but since then they have all of their permits in line. 
um, and are looking to start work and also have a matching grant from New York State in the amount of four hundred and ten thousand dollars so we are looking to offset some of the pricing has increased um, most likely due to covid and supply and demand issues um, as well as they have added stormwater drainage uh, here because right now um, actually uh, council um, councilwoman <laughs> Cindy McNamara sorry um, met us on site and they are doing additional drainage on the north and south sides of Noyak Road which will stop stormwater from flowing into the Alewife Creek and Canal questions for Ms. Fenlon whose project who in the town is this a highway uh, this is project? a highway is project municipal mm -hmm. okay it's yeah, highway. this is a highway project and yeah. it's going to affect the traffic on Noyak Road I'm yes sure and actually part of the plan does allow for traffic management so mm -hmm. they're also closely looking at the time frames with this so looking to do um, most of the construction and start this after the busy summer season after what yeah. after the busy summer season right. yeah okay. so we met on site with sergeant shot and hummel and we mm -hmm. discussed traffic and mark brager was there and we had a long conversation about you know mm -hmm. because they're going to have to do closers and stuff and if yeah. you know where that lane comes in and it just basically is a yield right onto noyak yep. road yep. where mm -hmm. we were even con having a conversation about making that temporarily a stop sign because when you come around that turn it doesn't allow for a lot of time to see that there's a lane closure or something going on there so it's all being taken into consideration there's it's really in really poor shape and this would be in conjunction with when the county does north sea road they'll fix the culvert under north sea road yeah so this whole passage will be redone and really help the ly population mm -hmm. and this is one of the second most time in front of us I, I, I was wondering if it, they were going to close down one lane and do yes uh, right so there's there's going to be traffic control. Yeah, so they actually there. have traffic uh, circulation, so they're going to allow for two-way traffic, but they're going to actually shift it um, to the south and to the north, still al allowing for And this didn't lanes. happen the first time around, presumably because of COVID? Because yeah, I believe I it, mean, was, it, it was funded. It messed a lot of things yeah, up. Was, yeah, I, I'm not sure, you know, if their permits were in place, but it was funded in 2019. Mm -hmm. Most likely by the time it went to contract, we were dealing with the pandemic. Um, and then now they have all approvals in place, in place so it will be stormwater, and then they're also doing some... Um, management of the existing creek there to improve the flow. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think that's actually what what the holdup was. Yeah. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the last of the eight alewife runs that that have been conducted throughout the throughout the town. Yeah. Southampton. So I, don't quote me, but I think this is one of the most successful alewife yeah. runs on Long Island, yep. if not the most successful, or at least in Suffolk County. Um, where they're able to get to Big Fresh Pond. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Apparently it works at high tide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then when it gets low tide, they can't. They can't get up. Yeah. Yeah. There, it also is time sensitive because the state grant does have an end date to yes. it. Yes, that is very important. Yeah. I wanted to show you the traffic management plan. If I, I mean, I, I think it's a great example of working across different, different uh, organizations as well as different uh, authorities in the state you know we work with the state of new york we work locally with the county and our and our cpf did you want to stamp well, i usually do please okay. hand them to me in the future and or bring them stamped i'll supply you with sure. one in the future but are you passing these out <laughs> Just leave them with her. There we go. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. For Ms. Do you Taylor? need that back? Huh? Do you need that back? Okay. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> it's my copy, but because you'll never see it again. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, what's the total project cost with all the grants? Um, it's actually one million twenty thousand dollars. So it was originally funded for eight hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So this is the additional two hundred thousand dollars to make sure the project can move forward. So environmentally, it's providing predator fish, which uh, allow our osprey communities and other other uh, um, wildlife to to thrive. Uh, that was that we almost lost. So that's really a really big big environmental benefits to yeah. restore those populations. And there's water quality benefits as well water to the freshwater oh, bodies as well as the creek. Pre pre uh, fish that are predated upon by birds and uh, well, they're, they're not they're, they're food. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We just they're, call them the predator because they're, they're the ones predated, that predated, but they're yeah. not predators. Well, they're predators actually in the water, but that's a whole other story. Yeah, and but there was they, actually they a they Peconic get, estuary program. They get program. eaten by right osprey, but they also, when they get to the saltwater environment, 
they're a favorite of our striped bass mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well, so it keeps that population thriving. Yeah. Um, but so they, they're, I forget the name of that type of fish. Uh, that Didromenus? Is Andromenus, is that it? Dedromenus? Dedromenus. Dedromenus. Yeah. So they, li they live in both salt water and fresh water environments. They spawn, so they spawn in fresh water and then they go back the out. The the so now is this also like provide a ladder or no? Uh, no it's just actually not culvert. needed. It doesn't need this to. This one yeah. doesn't need one. We're just actually, does. yeah, we're actually just going to be lowering it and then it actually, I believe, provides like a gripping surface. So even if there is a low amount of water, fish can still. They're putting, they're putting um, like a sizable quantity of rock in so that the like fish gravel. can use the gravel to get yeah. through. It's a, okay. there, there's no counter there though, like in Woodhull, where they count individual fish and they're, they're uh, I don't believe so, but there definitely is monitoring. Yeah. Um, I was trying to say before Dan's that- um, Dan's gonna count the fish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dan can count the fish. <laughs> um, but uh, Peconic Estuary <laughs> program update actually was stating how they you know, witnessed and they actually have pictures of where the fish are stopped from entering the area. And then they are also um, you know, preyed on by other uh, predators such as raccoons, et cetera. And this well works out because the culvert is due to be changed out. Yes, and the timing on this one yeah, is the ideal. Yeah, timing is, is good. Yeah. American Eel, too, is amazing. Yeah. Yes. They can swim up to the yeah. Yep, so okay. this is More on people. for uh, public hearing tonight, and there is an authorizing resolution, which is 2023-723 uh, on for this evening. Okay, so let's go to our audience. And then we're on public hearing number five, which is additional funding for this water quality project. Anybody wishing to be heard on this? I don't see anyone. We'll go to our computer audience. Anyone? watching this remotely who wishes to be heard no sir just on public hearing number five okay um i will make a motion to close public hearing five second second by councilman bouvier all in favor aye. aye aye okay so number five is closed and we'll move on to our last public hearing public hearing number six madam clerk public hearing number six to reallocate wqip funding from flying point comfort station to hot dog beach comfort station and no surprise, <laughs> <laughs> CPF program manager Jacqueline Fenlin will yes. introduce. Uh, good evening once again. Um, this is another good water quality project that we wanted to get before you. Um, this is an, a reallocation, so this is more like a transfer of funds from one town project to another town project. Uh, we started off with approval of Flying Point for water quality um, for uh, by resolution 2020 1079 which allocated 302 and $300 to the Flying Point Beach IA system uh, due to high groundwater levels and because it would also require substantial um, disturbance to the existing healthy dune system there uh, the town decided not to move forward with the IA system at this time and also looked at the alternative for putting in an IA system at Hot Dog Beach uh, so the plans are right here. And what is beneficial about this beach is a pop popular beach in Hampton Bays, and it also has an existing, oh, sorry, East Quag. <laughs> I think the letter said Hampton Bays, and I was actually questioning it, so I apologize, East Quag. Um, and this actually has an existing sanitary system from the former restaurant, so we'll be repurposing that sanitary system as well as adding to it, um, but this would allow there to be uh, facilities and a comfort station at this beach. So, but I mean, that seems to be the big question. So the, the first place, uh, Flying Point, has a comfort station. Hot Dog Beach doesn't have a comfort station, so we're building a sanitary system. There's actually an existing station. one. There, there was one. There, there, was one. there, was one. there once one. was yeah. one. There's already one here. So this will allow them to have a comfort station. To so we're, we're hook up putting, to and well, I guess that makes sense to put the sanitary system in first, but shouldn't we have a capital project? to build a comfort station as well? Um, I would let um, Kristen? Because Kristen or Matt speak to that. Not, these things don't work very well without a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe they're transporting one to the site. I, I think they're gonna connect it to a temporary facility yes. and then but at some point we're gonna have to build a comfort yes. station. Matt Jedlicker. Matt Jedlicker. Yeah, this is the fun associates. So um, <laughs> comfort station from Scott Cameron is going to get moved to Hot Dog Beach. The building? The <laughs> uh, here comes the boss. Hi, good evening. Kristen Dulos, Town Parks Director. Um, we're going to repurpose uh, an old comfort station building and use it at Hot Dog Beach. So it was can, can you pick it up and move it? Mm -hmm, yes. 
it will be refurbished and it will be depending on where the building ends up being we're not sure if we'll be able to put it at ground level yet um, because of FEMA regulations uh, we may have to put it on the raised platform deck if we do we'll crane it up there so Scott Cameron it has an old comfort station and a new comfort station? Is that Scott Cameron's um, comfort station got washed out during Sandy, and a new one was put in its place. So this is the building that, that got washed, washed out during Sandy. <laughs> it didn't get washed out to sea, though. It just got flooded. Yeah. It might have been a little bit in, into it the moved. bed. <laughs> it moved a little bit. It moved. Um, but it's in good shape, and we have it stored at one of our yards, and um, it would be recited and reutilized. It, it would be The fine ultimate for that. recycling. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. That's cool. Yeah. All right. I didn't know that. So there actually will be a comfort station at Hot Toy yes. Beach, which is getting more and more popular. So. Mm -hmm. And just um, to let you know, for this summer, we'll be using the portable restroom trailer at that facility again. Okay. And it has been very, we, we staffed it for the first time last year with lifeguards, and uh, it was a big hit with the community. It's quickly become um, a favorite beach now that, you know, families feel safe to have their children swim there. And recreate so um, it's definitely getting a lot more utilization than it has been can I ask a, a, a technical question about the type of IA system sure I'll pass that off to Matt <laughs> so um, I know there's different systems out there that are in use this facility is highly seasonal right you get lots of people for a very short period of time and then it's cl closed the bathrooms locked for extended periods of time and I know some of these systems really depend on bacteria you know and it, the constant flow of uh, fecal matter right Absolutely. to for them to work so do we have a system here that is capable of restarting itself or yes. how is that going to work yep so uh, most of the comfort stations that do have the IAs have either a Fuji clean or a hydro action this is proposed to be hydro action, and they do start up once this once they open the comfort station, and you have some flow going to it. It does reactivate. You don't have to put in anything to no new bacteria. You don't have to introduce it. Doesn't no, we've die asked uh, Fuji Clean about it um, because of the seasonal nature of some of these <coughs> buildings, and they said no for Fuji Clean, and it's the same for hydro action. So once you have some flow going to it again, it starts back up. Okay. Um, do we ever test to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to? We haven't in Southampton. Um, the town of East Hampton, we do all the East Hampton um, town building conversions from typical sanitary uh, to IA systems. They're looking at testing. So at some point in time, and, they'll and have the, some And numbers. the county is, the Department the of Health does, is doing right. three reviews of all new installed systems. Right, but so. it'd be nice to, uh, on a town level, to, to There is data to yeah, those systems. Support that. It's not a bad idea to just to check, uh, particularly some of these more seasonal facilities, to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to. Right. I mean, in, in a location like that, it's less sensitive because the migration of water is toward the ocean not toward the bay at least i believe in that spot um, right. but in other places it's more critical to make sure that we are pulling that nitrogen out yes ocean great. doesn't have as big of an, an issue with nitrogen as the inner bays right and this is going to be the same system that was going to be at flying point yes it's specifically you know, it's, it's the anchors that are needed on the tanks in the winter time when they're empty if 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 there's flooding they will float so they will come out of the ground right so all that will be required by all engineering County health department right the buoyancy yeah. calculations all that stuff so you know the the primary permit that we have to get is through the health department and they'll need the buoyancy calculations flying point system was you know a little bit different than this because we were going to have to rec well, create a leaching area with leaching galleys this we actually have a pre-existing one that we can use leaching chambers it's an elevated system currently um, but as far as the ia system it's the same as what was being proposed at flying point the hydro action that's, that's system. a great question mm. um, 
I know with conventional systems too, sometimes in major storms, you end up with this sanitary rings out in the, the water moving around, and they're dangerous and problematic. So. Right, so in those cases But this is too. an area that could be inundated with floodwaters right. and has to be designed so it can handle mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's why hydro action is a good choice. They have a, a lot of data that they've, they've collected on exactly those kind of environments. So it's it's one of the ones that the county was recommending for this type of environment as well. So, right, you, you know, the data is good too. So, and the, so far, yeah. and the system is okay to be winterized because it's yes, they right. just yeah. We had this hearing about a year and a half ago. Yeah, same thing. No, well, we have uh, we have several in the ground in the town of East Hampton on their comfort stations. Um, there's been no issues with okay. winterizing and then starting it up in the beginning of the season. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Any other questions for Kristen or Matt or Jackie? And I just wanted to add one thing. Um, because it's going to be a new comfort station, we're required to put in an IA system. So this isn't um, a choice hmm. that we have between a traditional oh, and IA. We would have to put in if we're triggered with that requirement. And we also now have lifeguards there at Hot Dog Beach and a food truck, I think. Um, yes, we're we're still searching for a food truck for this season. Um, we didn't get any bids, so if any interested parties out there, contact mm -hmm. our office. <laughs> um, and uh, Kristen, are you here just for this one hearing? Yes. Um, okay. Um, let me just take the opportunity because I know it's summer's <laughs> almost here. Well, Memorial Day weekend. And, um, I know you've been super busy getting everything together. Thank you for all that you do, and you know, have a great season. And I know you work hard to make sure everybody's safe. And uh, we have a park system that I, I, it's probably bigger than some states have <laughs> in terms of park systems in the town of Southampton between CPF and the parks department. But uh, I know you work really hard, and you have so many people, lifeguards, and uh, park maintenance people. So just I wanted to publicly thank you for what you're doing. Oh, thank you right. so much. Yeah, Good I luck think the whole board echoes that. Mm -hmm. person. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Um, we'll go to the public. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard? Uh, public hearing number six, which is uh, reallocating water quality funding from Flying Point Comfort Station to Hot Dog Beach Comfort Station. All right, I suspected not. Uh, we'll go online. Anybody online for public hearing number six? No, sir. All right, I'll make a motion to close public hearing number six. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, so we're going to move on to public portion. I do have quite a number of cards in public portion. You can speak on any topic you desire. Um, every speaker is afforded... Yeah. Yeah. I thought Charles <laughs> was adding a little <laughs> like Yeah, no music. Yeah, please. <laughs> cell phone ringers off. Yeah, yeah. I thought um, we the, on a the transition. The so we, we, we do afford each speaker three minutes to make their comments known. We ask you to try to s stick to your three minutes. Um, our clerk will alert you when you're down to your last 30 seconds so you can finish before the buzzer. There's no buzzer. That's a basketball reference. So. Shot clock. All right, so um, I'm going to take these in the order that they were received. Um, we're going to start with Ralph Facillo, and on deck um, is Catherine Littlefield. And uh, it, it may help if you're on deck to just queue up behind the speaker so we can move quicker. quicker. Hi, right. Ralph Fusillo, 76 Drew Drive, Eastport, Southampton. I am the owner of the property located at 26 North Road, uh, can, uh, the canal battery storage site that is currently before the planning board. And I'd like to at first thank the town board for recognizing the need for battery storage on Eastern Long Island. And it just happened now, you mentioned the IA system runs on electric. The town is promoting electric with yard tools. The state is mandating um, non-gas installations. Everything's going electric. The grid can't handle it. They're closing down fossil fuel plants to resupport the grid, so th that supports the grid, so you need battery storage to keep the power on. 
the port board was proactive in finding sites and, and, and saying we need the size of property, we need to have it hopefully close to substations because you don't want to be building substations all across eastern Long Island. If you can find a site that's close to a substation, you run an underground line, no, nothing overhead, you don't have to build a substation, and it really fits the need. And like I said, with all the push for electric, this is the only way you're going to stop brownouts and restricted use of electricity as they're closing things down. So as you may or may not know, we're this site is pretty far down the road in the planning department. <coughs> Where is your site? Uh, 26 North Road, Hampton Bay. It's just for quick reference, you're on Sunrise Highway, you're going east, exit 66 North Road. It's inside the Cloverleaf. Uh, the county built a facility on the corner of the, <coughs> of the property that has a big silo, payloaders coming in. It's a DPW. That's yes, 24-7. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd like to point out that the nearest residence is over a football field away to the nearest spot uh, with the parcel, uh, you know, with all the parcel boundaries is a couple hundred feet, but where they're actually putting the batteries is more than a football field, 300 plus feet. And again, it's close to the substation, which makes it an ideal location. The big, you're going to hear some stuff coming up in the future. There's a lot of misinformation. Now, the, the good news is, is because this has already gone through the SECRA, there's been expanded environmentals done on this project that's passed. Um, and I think one important thing to really note, and I'm trying to abbreviate all this, it's a different battery than what you have in scooters and e-bytes. Okay, the, the, the batteries that are used here are called lithium or iron phosphate, which contain no rare earth metals like those that are found in scooters and e-bikes. So those are a little bit more toxic than these. So from that point of view, it's an apples to oranges comparison of the types of batteries that are used in, in these systems. Uh, more importantly, another thing that comes up with these is fire safety because of what you hear on the news and you hear about lithium batteries. Now, having said that, they're not stopping people from buying cars, they're not stopping people from buying e-box bikes, they're not stopping people from buying scooters. But most of the stuff that you see the fires is not UL listed. They're buying aftermarket batteries on the internet, stick them in there, charge them up, you have problems. So quickly, I just would like to say that all these batteries are obviously UL suit certified, NFPA, the National Fire Code, then goes through state codes in order to be able to put, be put into service. Once they're put into service, they're monitored 24-7, there's safeties within each bat that, that will shut these things down, shut them off. So from a safety point of view, they're just like anything else you trust. You don't go buy a car expecting it to blow up because it's got certain guarantees. Well, the same thing here. You're not going to, they're not putting, they're not spending tens of millions of dollars upwards, you know, different numbers depending on what they end up with is 40, 50, 60 million dollars to build this facility and get insurance for them to have any problems. Um, so this is always monitored. They've actually reached out to the Hampton Bay's fire department. They've already been pro very proactive. They want them to be trained. They want them to understand everything that's going on. Uh, they've had great feedback from the Hampton Bay's Fire Department. You know, short of the Olympic torch and the eternal flame, fires do go out, and it's just a question of how you mitigate those fires, if there is one. And like I said, for it to get out of the containment, as the man, you know, all from the UL listing and the National Fire Code, a lot has to happen. So I just want the board to be conscious of that. As far as noise, if anybody knows the property, you have nothing but highways around you, you have a DPW on the corner, not a house within 300 feet. It is a noisy area, but all the noise requirements have met the SECRA requirements, met the town codes, they brought all that stuff forward, so noise is really not an issue there with that. Um, the batteries, I like, I mean, like, there's a battery here, right? So Yes, different uh, battery, but sure. But, so do they make a sound? Well, what, where the noise will come in is cooling the internal, because that's all part of what you want to so do. it's a cooling fan? Like it's a cooling fan, air conditioning, basically. Each one has an air conditioning unit, and I'll let the, the developers get more technical when they're talking to the planning board. Uh, the real reason why I'm here is that there's a lot of misinformation. You know, people have 
come to me saying that we're running power lines from Shinnecock Canal up, you know, and there's a lot of misinformation on what this is. And the reason why you even have SECRA and the reason why the town goes through all these processes is to make sure that it's okay for the community or else why have the rules? Why have a code? So as they have gone along the process. 30 seconds. Thank you. I've checked all the boxes going down to that this in the town, if the town ever was, I don't want to say serious because they are, but if you're looking for this type of facility, which is definitely a need, I submit to you that there's no better location in the town of Southampton than inside a clo Cloverleaf, off the main highway, and 150 yards from the substation. And there's probably, suffice to say, more stuff going on at that substation than will ever go on at the battery storage Three facility. Three minutes. Now you have a fuel facility at that substation too. I yeah, they, I they might. When I was the, they do, because when I was with the county, I used to fill my car there sometimes. But the, real quick, and, 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 but the town did a great job. I think a little bit overwhelmed by maybe some of the, a lot of the projects that have come in because people were just looking for acreage and saying that they will build a substation or that, you know, high, high overhead lines. The reality of it is within the town of Southampton, I just ask as you're talking about moratorium, appreciate the fact that these people, you know, the developers have spent, you know, a lot of money, a lot of planning. We're way, we're at the 20-yard line there. And it's checked all the boxes with secret. They did expanded environmentals. They're meeting with the fire districts. They're doing everything they're supposed to do. Are there other approvals besides town approvals that you need? Uh, yes, they have to, in order to be able to, and again, I'll speak on my basic knowledge of this, but there's New York State interconnection, and that's out in uh, New York, that you have to be able to uh, go in. There's only certain s substations that can accept the redistribution of electricity back into them in real and layman's terms. It's just a big diaphragm, right? When it, and, and again, the big thing is, you know, it, it absorbs power. So we're pushing wind, we're pushing solar. Matter of fact, in the town of Southampton, now you build new houses, I don't know if it's a requirement, but you see a lot of solar going in. Uh, it's only as good as the energy it can store. You can buy storage for your house. You know, you can go to Generac right now and buy a little battery storage thing that goes in your house. And that's, you know, okay, this is just on a larger scale. So if you have wind, you have solar, you need to put it someplace or else you, you lose it. And that's what this does. And when there's demand, it will re-put re it back into the grid. So I just wanted to uh, thanks the board for your time. Thank you for seeing the need for this. And having that property, I think, was, out of all the years I've owned it, is the perfect solution to considering what's there with the county. And that they're really, there's people, they're neighbors, but they're 300 feet away. And I don't know if you're going to find another spot in the county that checks those boxes, in the town that checks those boxes. Ralph, there was, might be other questions. Uh, anybody else have a question? No. No, I, actually, I just wanted to. Your explanation was was spot on. Um, we Thank you. we can we call the those interconnect points. We're building an array out at North Sea. It's about a five megawatt system, and solar. the difficulty is a solar system. It's the difficulty is where to connect to. Um, we're really it's hard out here with life and peace segment and the way the grid is designed to get get hooked up. Um, also, um, your point about battery differential, there's, there's many different kinds of, you know, if you were in Arizona, you'd be using, a, you know, a, a liquid metal type battery. Sure. There's different kinds of, the, you know, I'm an engineer, so I get really get into this and dig into this a lot. The containment systems and the, the way uh, um, heat is controlled is pretty much next to none. Um, the only thing I would suggest to you is that the evolution of batteries is evolving very quickly sure. and I know companies have big investments in the current jig for this type of battery but be aware that that will change <coughs> over time and I think um, uh, you know, that's just something to put into the model going forward because we're and it has a lot to do with the interconnect issue so it's multi-pronged so, way to so do Ralph that. just so Ralph isn't building anything Ralph owns the property, on the property. Yeah, on the property. and I just felt I just felt compelled with some of the stuff that was going around and being said to just reiterate to the board as you know it is a little overwhelming especially if you don't know a technology and to your point you're right because they you don't commit on the equipment that you're putting in yet because everything is evolution. And they're not building these things 
for there to be problems with or else the whole premise of sustainability and environmental friendly energy goes away. So if you're, if you're, if you're going to be doing away with gas power generators or diesel power generators to provide electric for the community, you better have something safe on the other side to replenish it. And, and that's what all these, again, that's why underwriters and uh, you know, the National Fire Code, the state, NYSDERA, they, you can go online, they have a <coughs> whole thing on battery storage, fire, what, what happens, and to your point, it is evolving. Yeah, and I, I just wanted but there your, is your, your explanation was very a, good. An eminent need because yeah. the state is moving faster and, and shutting down power and we're going to end up probably like California with rolling blackouts. Because think about how much more electric is being used today than was three years ago, even in septic systems or um, uh, cars. You're building EV stations. It's all a drain on the grid, and you have to find the power to support it. It's also solar and wind. You know, the wind isn't always blowing and the sun isn't always shining. So when they are, you get the storm. That, well, wind and, wind and solar is useless without batteries. You can also charge the batteries at night when there's not a lot of demand for power, fill them up, and then during the day when you have peak demand. And I know that property really well because it's a tough property because it's inside of a coal relief. Yeah. To, like you can't build houses or apartments there. It's not much you can do. And the do county there. industrialized it, basically. Yeah. Sure. So, well, I thank right. you for your time. Feel free to contact me, and um, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, the, just to comment on this, uh, you know, the issue is fire suppression, and uh, the Suffolk County Fire Academy is holding a, uh, a course for our local fire departments in West Hampton Beach in June on this very issue. So, you know, they're reacting, and, and yeah, and yeah. the fire departments are going to have to learn how to do it, and the developers. I've been in contact proactively Come to the mic, please. with our Hampton-based mm -hmm. fire. Ralph, if you got to speak, I just, oh, I apologize. It's recording. We I'm hear you, but oh, the uh, Just real quick, just the, that's why the developers have been proactive uh, speaking with the fire marshal and then in furtherance to the Hampton Bay's uh, fire district and at least getting the dialogue o open, have training there, have them really understand it so that this way there's no issues. And um, there's a lot of people there's a lot of people smarter than us right now that yeah. understand the situation that are coming down. I'm happy to see the Ni National Fire Protection Ag Association is having yeah. uh, standards yeah, on I'm this. I'm glad so. you're actually, or the, whoever the company is, is reaching out to the fire department. Mm -hmm. there, are, look, there are uh, significant concerns out there in the community, and, and the board has been hearing from people who are concerned, um, particularly about the fire issue, but there's some other issues as well. So the more accurate factual information that can be disseminated to the public, I think, um, I, I think would be a, a positive thing. So, you know, because pe people are, people are worried. Yeah. So. And, but I, I really think once it, once it's put in, just like self-storage, it, whatever, it's going to be a benign, the benign record, facility. The record is, is, is pretty good on these systems. I, I'll, I'll grant you that. But yeah, I, I there was 11 we have a lot of total in history to in, in the United States, 11 yeah. fires, none of which re mm -hmm. related in any deaths. They've all been put out. You know, they've Obviously, they've all been put out. There are mitigation. There's training. There's best management practices. And again, if something's not right, it shuts it down. Okay. It's, it's 21st century you know, technology. It shuts it down. So, uh, and again, the location is such that there really isn't anything around for it to spread to. Where's it going? You know, if you look at the aerial of it, I it's got nowhere to go. Right, thank so you. thank you again, thank and you. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. So Catherine Littlefield will be followed by um, Carol Finocchio. Thank you for waiting. Yeah. Again. Thank you. Again. Thank you for the work that you do. It was, it was a pleasure to see it here tonight and how, how hard working you are to make to maintain our, our beautiful community. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. I'm a resident of Mill Farm Lane and um, two weeks ago I brought to you the issue of the sewer treatment plant uh, within walking distance of our homes and our organization of our community consisting of 75 people and um, with the goal to prevent this from happening. Um, and we received a letter yesterday from Mr. Burke. Um, and so it is believed that the town is not supporting buying that land for the purpose of 
creating a sewer system there. So if that is correct, we, um, we thank you very much. We uh, also attended the village meeting and there seems to be a little discrepancy in what the village is saying versus what Mr. Burke has put into our letter. And uh, we want to reiterate that we are prepared to keep going to prevent this from happening in our community, recognizing that water treatment is necessary. Everything that you're doing is necessary. The location that was chosen did not seem appropriate. And the thought of sewage from the village being trucked into that site and coming through our community, it, 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 it's ordered on the absurd when you do a, a, a visual. You can identify it on a map, but if you drove through it, you would understand that how that, that sewage gets trucked, installed, and then those trucks have to move out. How are they moving out? Where are they going? They have to come back to either um, Flying Point Lane, or if they can't, uh, because of the traffic, will they circle through a mill farm and around Diamond Court? This is not something that we as a community really want to endure. So I, we're here tonight to basically thank you for what you've done so far and hope that we can continue with making sure that that land doesn't become what someone might be able to do even though you are right now giving approvals for it to become a sewer. So I'm going to defer to the next speaker with other suggestions that we have. Thank Can you. I just yes. correct just one, yeah. and I don't know if it's a misconception, but um, so the village is proposing a sewage treatment plant, not um, a scavenger waste facility. So the, the waste isn't being trucked, you know, pumped from individual cesspools and brought there. It's, it would be piped there. But there would be some trucking of the sludge materials from that site. If, it, if that site were used for a sewage treatment plant, there would be some truck, trucking of materials out, but not trucking of waste in. So I just wanted to clarify that. The village has never made clear its plans. Okay. We have not seen what they propose to do and how we propose to do it. We can only rely on our knowledge of art events where um, there are where waste is collected, pumped out, and trucked to where it's going to be deposited. So we used our thought processes for large venues and to, to determine or uh, form the opinion that that's what would be happening. Um, there are uh, sewage treatment plants that do receive waste that way? Yes. Um, some that only receive waste that way, but others like the Riverhead facility um, is a sewer district that also brings in truck waste. I, 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 but I'm not arguing that the village really has not presented what their plans were, but I have not heard of that that would be a component of what they were proposing. Just waste from the village all pumped there uh, in, you know, in pipes under the ground. Through that, sewer, has sewer not been put, that has not been put forward by okay. the village. And the village had in this last meeting declared themselves an entity above and beyond what the town has decided to be able to do this on its own. And we find that objectionable and we we declare our intentions to fight that as well at all, whatever levels possible. Thank so you. We have had, I, I know other board members as well as myself, I have <laughs> spoken with some of the village board members and they seem to understand that that is not a property the town is considering. That, you know, because we would have to rezone it. They're looking for significant grant monies to acquire it and monies for infrastructure and uh, it doesn't sound like anybody on the board is inclined to support that property for those purposes and so the village is um, actively exploring other sites and I know that's something that you want to speak to or the next speaker but uh, you know I know they spent a lot of work we respect the this, work. But we were not involved in the work that they um, were undergoing. So they didn't include us in the site selection. They told us the site that they decided was best for them. It just happened to be in the town outside the village. Yes. And yeah. in next to your neighborhood. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. 
and within walking distance, and within a visual of one of our, my colleague's daughter's bedroom, 20 feet away. Not nice. And the village, there seems to be a group. There are factions, like in any group, for and against. So we cannot figure out what the village trustees are thinking, <laughs> who's with whom, and it is obvious that they don't get along very well, but we, <laughs> I'm <think>. sorry, <laughs> but um, we just, we represent our community, what we would like to see, and we would help to identify sites uh, to the best of our ability. We are a group of professionals in our community, um, and I thank you very much for listening. All right, thank you, Ed. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so that was Catherine, so Carol uh, Finocchio, if I said it wrong, I'm no, sorry, right. uh, followed by Sylvia Bellotti. Okay. Um, uh, thank you for listening to me. Uh, my name is Carol Finocchio. I'm an attorney. I live at 94 Lower Seven Ponds Road in Watermill. Um, uh, we are a diverse group of professionals. I'm not a technical person. I'm an appellate litigator. Many in the group are very accomplished litigators and we're like a dog with a bone. <laughs> and we were very appreciative of Mr. Burke's letter yesterday. Um, we do believe that you've listened to us, so we truly appreciate, including Ms. McNamara, who wrote initially to many of us, um, we appreciate your understanding our major concern about this. It's in the agricultural uh, district overlay. And for us, I'm, for me, like I've owned three, I've actually owned four properties along this back road here, including three on Lower Seven Ponds Road. And for me, it's such a special area of the community that I would be devastated if a sewage treatment plant was there. Um, I think environmentally it would not be good and for many other reasons, but obviously I'm not a technical person. So getting to the main point, we, we trust and we believe that you've heard us and that you don't want to, to move this forward. But I will admit that being dogs with the bone, <laughs> we have great anxiety about the village and we are hopeful that they will pass, or they will rescind their resolutions. We saw that they rescinded the hearing that they were planning for June 9. Um, that was apparently on a resolution. We're not municipal lawyers. But we don't know, do they still have this secret study going for the site? What happens next? We're hoping that that gets rescinded as well because we are truly concerned. I went to the village hearing the last, last time we all spoke up and there was truly great confusion. There seemed to be a disconnect and that, that is p part of our current anxiety. Um, so that's it. Thank you so much. I hope that that's something you can address. We, uh, we appreciate very much. We've circulated the various letters amongst ourselves because we are very coordinated. We do appreciate your letters, Mr. Burke, and we are hopeful that maybe the village can clarify a little bit too and maybe withdraw those resolutions that gave us great anxiety. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. Okay, next up, uh, Sylvia Bolatti. Bolatti, yes. Hi, good evening. Uh, and this is Supervisor. And you will be followed by Andrew Roof. Roof? Roof? Ruff? Roof. Roof. I had it right the first time. Andrew Roof. Good evening, Mr. Supervisor and members of the board. My name is Sylvia Bolatti. Uh, I'm in the interest of full disclosure, I'm also a commercial litigator, <laughs> and I own a house at 826 North C. Meacox Road. Uh, I've owned it since 1997, and it's an exceptional place because I have a beautiful view uh, to 33 acres of farmland. Uh, One Barrows Lane is directly in my line of sight, uh, and uh, from my backyard, you could see the property from that triangle. I'm facing the point of that triangle so I could see the property directly. But, uh, and, uh, and I'm also, I also have a home on 653 Head of Pond Road, which is a very busy road, as you know, which is in close proximity. So my first point is thank you very much for listening to us. Uh, I think many of us had sleepless nights over this. Uh, it was, it came as a complete surprise to us and we very much, we know we have a very difficult job. We know that this is, there's a need for the sewage plant. Uh, and we appreciate that you listened to us and took immediate action to let the village know 
that the town will not support the purchase of this property, uh, or as I understand Mr. Burke's letter, uh, the town will not support the building of a, a sewage facility in the town. There are many sites in the village that are appropriate, and the only reason in our uh, uh, in our belief, it's our belief that the village hasn't proceeded with a location in the village is because residents have opposed it and they don't want to pay for this project. Uh, I do have a specific question. Um, we understand that the village is going to rescind resolution number three uh, passed on May 11th. That resolution set a hearing, I think, for May 6th for the engineers uh, to present the plan and the May map. May 6th or June 6th? June I'm sorry, June 6th. Thank you for correcting me. June 6th. Uh, we understand that resolution will be rescinded, but there's no notice of the of resolution number four being rescinded. Uh, that resolution uh, provides that the mayor has directed its council and the engineers to seek lead agency status uh, for purposes of pursuing the uh, construction of the sewage facility at this location. So my question is, uh, and uh, I'm not a municipal lawyer, so forgive me for not knowing this, but has the, the town rescinded the authority for the village to seek lead agency status under CEQA, uh, which uh, the mayor authorized pursuant to resolution number four? Uh, as far as rescinding the authority, well, the only communication I, I've had, I'm dealing uh, with the village administrator, and the village administrator has responded very favorable to my email to her. And we are looking, I'm trying to work with her to, to find sites within the village at this point. There's no discussion of any sites outside of the village uh, properties right now. Um, I'm not real familiar with what the village has been doing as far as their hearings and their uh, but if there's, obviously if this process is dead, there's no reason to do secret for this. I mean, they maybe, they certainly would want to be looking to do secret for a sewage treatment plant in the, in the village. Um, but I, as far as any discussions on who's taking lead agency on, on this project, you know, as far as the town's concerned, this project is not moving forward. So. Would the town have to authorize the village to seek lead agency status for purposes of construction uh, of the sewer plant? Well, typically, they, lead agency is the is the is the entity that's pursuing the project? So it's really their project. So they technically they could under secret be say they are going to be the lead. We could contest it, but I don't like in the situation. There's no reason to do that. Uh, so the only thing that I point out is that the village has not rescinded. That they've specifically said that they will rescind resolution number three. Right. What that does is it c cancels the June 6 hearing, mm -hmm. but they have specifically not okay. rescinded okay. resolution number four. I was at the May 11th hearing mm -hmm. and spoke at that hearing. And so uh, to us, it's a concern that that resolution uh, it has not been rescinded. This is, I'm sorry, this is resolution number four. Resolution right? number four, okay. which was passed, which directs, the mayor directs uh, the village council the engineers and the consultants to seek lead agency okay. status uh, before seek, uh, but before the environment, uh, environmental protection right. agency, sure. I think it is. Yeah. But that to us uh, is still a point of concern mm -hmm. because I don't believe from the research that I had done that the village would have the authority to do that without mm -hmm. uh, authority from the town. In fact, uh, mm -hmm. usually there are contracts that govern the rights and obligations of the town and the village of municipalities when they seek lead agency status. So we don't know if there's a contract or there's an agreement. Uh, and even if there isn't, uh, the what we would ask is for the town to make it crystal clear to the village that they are not authorized to seek lead agency status or any status in connection with the construction of a sewage plant. Sure. And lastly, because I don't want to take time from my other neighbors, I also want to say for Head of Pond and North Sea Meatcocks, you know, I don't know, uh, many of you probably drive through these streets uh, often, uh, but um, we wanted to raise also the concern that those of us who live on these bu busy streets, I am not on Mill Farm Lane, which is beautiful, uh, but uh, when I go to get my mail, I have to be careful not to be run over by the Southampton Jitney uh, or the massive trucks 
that go through these residential streets. So if you're walking your dog or you have a child by your hand, if you want to ride your bicycle, and uh, if you want to do any of the things that we do and enjoy living in this community, you cannot do it on Head of Pond Road, you cannot do it on North Sea Neacox Road, and you cannot do it on Lower Seven Ponds Road because there is no restriction for huge trucks, buses, and heavy commercial vehicles to uh, traverse those streets at any speed they wish. And we ask you uh, to uh, please consider this. Uh, I don't know what the solution is, but I think uh, we need to work together with you and support you in your endeavor to control the heavy traffic that has really become a major, major nuisance for the neighbors in the block. Thank you so much again. All right, so um, next up, Andrew Roof. Um, and, and Andrew is followed by Laura uh, Zubulave, or am I? <laughs> don't, don't try to just leave it alone. Subale. Subale. It's easy. Subale. Okay. <laughs> uh, so thank you, uh, members of the town council. I really appreciate this opportunity to address you. I want to kind of give a couple thank yous. First of all, thank you guys for what you just do in general for the, for the community. This is a very special place in my hearts, and I've recently found out to all my neighbors' hearts. And so I'm sure sometimes it feels like a thankless task for you all but it really means a lot to me the effort and time that you guys spend away from the other things that you probably have going on in your life so thank you guys for that and then more specifically thank you for allowing our neighborhood uh, to be heard in this one bower situation because it has been uh, two and a half weeks of sleepless nights for all of us especially uh, councilwoman mcnamara thank you for the personal uh, letters and the phone call to really find out what uh, this meant to us and i and i think if i could just frame what this community means to us i think you guys will all um, maybe be aware that this is how people out here feel maybe not um, but uh, my home uh, i was i bought the land in 09 built the house in 2010 and uh, the first time that house sheltered me was in sandy when my apartment lost electricity in the city and was a place of refuge and then during covid came out here and have since moved full time and it's always been that type of place for me, a place where I could hide and get away from the stressors of the world. And I was really surprised to see that every one of my neighbors feel the exact same way and that this is a special place. It's sacred ground to us. We're surrounded by such natural beauty, a lot of which this board and, and prior boards have spent millions of dollars to preserve the land around us. And we're truly grateful for that. It's a wonderful gift that we have to be a part of the community there. And so to wake up one day and hear that the village was considering putting a sewage treatment plant in the heart of our neighborhood at the entrance to our neighborhood was like a knife to the heart and it was uh and has been really traumatic for us all and i, I hate to tra traumatize this because i feel like everybody does we're not saying that we're victims in any way shape or form but it's really been a rough patch the silver lining to it has been the way the community has come together uh, somebody mentioned there's 65 people there's actually 65 families we've got about 120 people and we haven't even gone to the other side of the farm and tried to bring them together. We do want to be a block that can be heard and, and um, have our views felt. I think I feel that I've neglected my political involvement. I'm 50 years old, and at this point, I haven't been involved in politics really at all. And I would like to, to think that now, going forward, I need to change that. And uh, this is the opportunity, I think, the wake-up call to me that to be more active. And so as we look at this, and we have all these questions, and Local politics is confusing to me. This is the first time I've ever availed myself to what's going on out here. But in the three and a half weeks or two and a half weeks that this has been going on, I feel like I've learned quite a bit. And it certainly seems like there's one person in the Village Board of Trustees, because I've spoken to three now, it certainly seems like this whole uh, thing is being driven really by one person and he's not interested in listening to the town board's uh, statements Mr. Burke, thank you for your letter that 30 you seconds. made clear that this was not going to be a site, but it seems like it's still continuing. And so our request to you as a community is to consider the CPF funds to purchase this property, not just to stop and let us have rest and peace of mind around the fact that there will never be a sewage treatment plant because we are worried subsequent boards could change their mind in the future, but also this is a scenic gateway to the north. This is a scenic gateway, everybody going further east tons of people drive by there it's a beautiful 
really kind of uh, spot that most people probably have never even noticed because it's so uh, surrounded by trees on the sides, on the back side. And I would just implore you guys to consider using CPF funds to preserve it. And lastly, if I could just say, the community remains interested in seeing if we could be partners in that. Could we be stewards of it afterwards to remove some of the burden? Any and all options that you guys could think of, we'd be willing to be partners with you to try and solve for this. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of the agricultural fields in your neighborhood have what's called enhanced agricultural easements at this town board. A couple of years ago, we, we really uh, made great efforts in that area on the triangle. It will always be in food production. Well, we know. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So, um, He's going to try to say your name again. That's <laughs> Laura. You can just call me Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, you're followed by uh, Joe Tennant. Okay. Good, uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Laura Zubalake. <laughs> I live on Diamond Court. I'm within walking distance of Bowers Lane. And I've written several emails to you all about uh, my feelings about this. And yes, I vehemently oppose it. I will. I always will. And as far as I'm concerned, I will do anything to help um, alleviate this situation and resolve it in, in some way. Um, we do appreciate you listening. And we appreciate your response. So we, you know, we all want to make that very, very clear. We're not um, um, complaining about that whatsoever. But we are concerned that there is no final uh, um, resolution in sight, and that in a year, two years, when some of you are not here, we could have a new administration and views will change. And so we, we really want to deal with that. Um, you know, what Angela uh, mentioned with regard to CPFs as an option, um, I would. Um, support that. I would do anything. I'd volunteer any time, any effort that you require. I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, when you take a look at the site, um, where the proposed site, where these tanks would be um, situated, it is what, what I often call a gateway to the Hamptons, if you take a look at that intersection. Because you arrive at that intersection at 39 and David White's. You know, to the right is the village. Straight ahead, you go towards the beach, flying point. Pers going up further is Bridgehampton, East Hampton. If you go to the left, it's Watermill, it's Sag Harbor, it's those open farms. To me, it's just antithetical to everything the Hamptons represent to place some sort of industrial, commercial tanks, however you want to describe it, in that particular location. Um, I mean, if anything, we want open greenery. We have the Hampton Jitney there, so we have visitors coming to that area all the time. It's a very heavily traversed intersection. Also, I, I would have a, a, a question with regard to whether there's been any sort of study conducted um, the, the impact of traffic flows. And I know when, whenever something is result, my dad used to do this for a living for Nassau County, so I grew up around this kind of thinking, that you know when you take a look at the Bowers location, it's a very sort of unusual spot if you take a look at it on the map. It does not have direct access to 39. It has access to David White's, but that access is actually between two intersections. It's the one intersection with the traffic light, and then there's also another intersection which just has stop signs, and it's a cross intersection that's offset, and it's very dangerous. I don't know if you've ever noticed someone put a mirror up on a pole so that as you turn out, you can actually see um, cars and vehicles from the blind spot. I mean, I don't exit there anymore because it's, it's just not safe and I've seen many accidents. And I think it was Mr. Schneiderman that just said that, you know, while the, the, the sewage may be piped in, sludge will be trucked out. And if you take a look at where Bowers is, the only really viable way to truck it out is down Mill Farm Lane, which gets you to, you know, Seven uh, Points Road. It's just, I mean, these are small streets. We have landscapers. Y y you just can't have that kind of traffic um, on a regular basis. So, you know, we certainly hope that we continue this effort. We want to work with you. We appreciate everything you've done. Three minutes. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, um, Joe, you are next. Joe Tennant, uh, followed by Myron Holtz. Great. 
And thank you all for your time. My name is Joe Tennant. I live at 10 Flying Point Road, which is the corner of Flying Point and Diamond Court. Um, you all might have received my, my emails, and as Miss uh, Littlefield uh, said, uh, I'm the proud father of two young daughters who uh, have a, a nice view of the beautiful acreage over there at the One Bower site. So today I just want to make very brief comments, uh, two thank yous and, and one ask. The first uh, thank you, um, it really, when this process started just over two weeks ago, um, I was worried for obvious reasons. I was also perhaps worried for some selfish reasons because well, it's not a competition, I do think I am the closest house to this site. And I thought that I might have to uh, fight a bit of this battle um, you know, on my own or with some of the surrounding neighbors. I, um, as the keeper of the spreadsheet, um, there are 66 households involved here and that's over, you know, over 120 uh, individuals in the community and it's been really heartwarming to see people come together to, uh, to uh, you know, express our thoughts about this and um, I'm really thankful for that. Um, second thank you is to the board, members of the board, for hearing us for the work that you do um, and for the clarity that folks like Ms. McNamara and, and Town Attorney Burke have provided over the last few days. It's, we, it really means a lot to us, um, so, so thank you. And then finally, the ask, I think it echoes uh, Andrew's comments. Um, I grew up on a farm in North Carolina. I was attracted to this neighborhood uh, based on the agricultural uh, aspects of it. I, I think preserving the land. Um, would be a, a great use of, of town funds as well as the fact that uh, it would eliminate the uh, anxiety that I think a lot of uh, the, the local neighbors feel as a result as it relates to this property. So um, again, thank you for your time and, and for all the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Myron Holtz, you're next, followed by Sheila uh, Camparetta. Comparetta, thank you. <laughs> Good evening, town board members. My name is Myron Holtz. I'm a resident of 180 Tout Point Road in North Sea. My wife and I have resided on that property since uh, 1972 at First Cottages, and then in 2002, we built a year-round house, and we moved out here in 2008 full-time when both of us retired. We live in the hamlet of North Sea, which is a very, very small hamlet with a a tiny hamlet business district, essentially about, I'd say, half a dozen, most a dozen businesses in, this, in the middle of the road between County Road 39 and Noyak Road. That's the central business district. We became aware of a plan by the county to uh, redo County Road 39 uh, about three or four months ago by a big sign lit up saying there would be a Zoom meeting uh, to alert the residents of the community about what was happening on County Road 39. And subsequently, we learned that, well, County Road 39 is now public. We're going to do County Road 38. And what are they talking about? We've asked to have the County Road 38, North Sea Road, repaid for years. And finally, somebody woke up and said, all right, let's do it. But from what we understand, and uh, Ms. McNamara is a councilwoman who's a liaison to the North Sea CAC. I'm the vice chair of the CAC. And we learned that the town was not even aware of what was going on. And the town, town engineer, and I don't know if the town board members were aware of where the county was in their plan and what they were proposing to do on County Road 38. So I'm here tonight to voice my opposition and those of my neighbors in that small community to sidewalks and curb cuts concerning the proposed North Sea Road redevelopment plan. While we all agree that North Sea Road needs to be repaved, I would like to see the sidewalks and curb cuts eliminated from the plan. We were obviously at one point misled by the County Department of Public Works when they talked about the Complete Streets Program and we did a little research on it. Uh, my wife's an attorney and we read the legislation which was initiated by Cal <laughs> Town Supervisor Jay Schneiderman. He's a co-sponsor of it. it wasn't and the complete wasn't street the legislation sponsor. does not require it sidewalks as part of this project. It, does not it indicates it. only that sidewalks be considered. And if there is enough or if there is a reasonable opposition to it, then we assume that the county would be responsive. And from what we understand, uh, that is not the case. The, uh, there was a hearing uh, or a meeting last week uh, at the uh, North Sea Fire Department and Firehouse and they invited the business community and I, in fact, when I found out about it through Ms. McNamara, 
that you were having a town board meeting about it and there was going to be our CAC Zoom meeting, I walked the dozen businesses and I handed out notices about the Zoom meeting that we were having and about the town board meeting on County Road 38. So we then found out that uh, they were going to have another meeting at the uh, firehouse for the business people. And the takeaway was that the business people who were there said, it's a done deal, sidewalks are going to be included. But according to info that was just obtained from County Road, County Legislative Bridge of Fleming's office, the county's plan for County Road 38 is still in the development stages, with the county giving consideration to input from the stakeholders. There is still an opportunity for the town as a major stakeholders, that's this body here, 30 seconds. Uh, to voice the town's opposition to the con or recognize the concerns of residents and businesses and you can notify the county executive and the county department of public works where you feel about this however the takeaway from the meeting is that it's a done deal the thing that i want to just have a brief moment to address is unfunded mandates which i'm sure you are all familiar with the unfunded mandate here is the necessity of the town to take over the sidewalks and the maintenance and clearing and upkeep of the sidewalks that's an, an under New York tort law, I'm not an attorney, but my wife is, something called an attractive nuisance, contributory negligence. You remember the expression, build it and they will come? Well, if you put the sidewalks in, now you're going to have street lighting, because otherwise you're going to be walking in the dark. What about the dark skies initiatives that the board is so interested in and wants to support? Right, and right, who's going to pay minutes, for this? So you just have to wrap up here. Okay. Does the, does the town board know where the town engineers request for information? from the county has been given to the town engineer yet? Because from what I understand, the town engineer has not gotten all the information he has requested from the County Department of Public Works. So my answer is, why are you not trying to prevent this problem rather than inviting this problem? So I'll just leave you with this note. Please say no to the county plan for sidewalks on North Sea Road. You have the power to do that. They won't listen to us. Maybe they'll listen to you. Thank so you. thank you very thank much. You, Mark. Thank okay. you, Myron. All right. Thanks, Myron. All right. Uh, Sh Sheila. Uh, Comparetta. You, Comparetta, followed by <laughs> Stephanie McNamara. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Um, I've lived for over 25 years in North Sea. I'm here also to share my op opposition to sidewalks and the curb cuts on proposed on North Sea Road. Uh, everyone in North Sea and elsewhere realizes that the North Sea Road absolutely needs to be repaved. But I also have to consider the business aspect of it. Under one ownership or another, the small businesses in our Hamlet Center have served North Sea for decades, some of them for over 80 years. This history is not only important to our local identity, but we do not want to lose the services they provide to the, our community. It seems to me each business with an address on North Sea Road should be contacted via mail if necessary to, imp to identify what impact the sidewalks and the curb cuts may have on their business. A public hearing is not sufficient unless more than 50% of the affected businesses participate. It is my opinion that the small businesses affected are not able to make it to your public hearing, then it is on you to make contact with them. Because installing, um, because installing sidewalks and curb cuts in front of North Sea businesses will also eliminate available parking and will badly hurt the business district. It is for this reason and many others that I urge you to remove sidewalks and curb cuts from the redevelopment plan for North Sea Road. Thank you for the opportunity to allowing me to speak. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Stephanie. You are next, followed by Amy Paradise. Okay, thank you for the opportunity to address the Southampton Town Board during the public portion. My name is Stephanie McNamara, and I reside at 231 New York Road, where I've lived since 1982, now here almost my entire life. I'm here today representing myself, and I'm also the chair of the North Sea CAC. 
I'm here tonight to voice my opposition to sidewalks and curb cuts concerning the proposed North Sea, redevelop North sea Road redevelopment plan. While I agree that North Sea Road needs to be resurfaced, we as a CAC have been asking for this for as many years as I've been on the CAC, which is a long time. Um, we had initially been told by someone from the Department of Public Works that we would be contacted as the CAC so that we could reach out to the community, find out what the community wanted and needed. The person who assured us that that was going to happen, and we were given this notice, I'd say, uh, three to five years ago, um, uh, that person is no longer with the DPW. And so then all of a sudden we see this sign. They come out and tell us, this is what we're doing to your community. We're putting sidewalks in on both sides of North Sea Road, from the County Road 39 all the way out to almost Noyak Road. Our community does not want or need sidewalks. We never asked for that. We were not consulted on it. When we're trying to voice our opinions, from what we're being told, every time we bring that to our attention, and Sydney's been gracious enough to bring it to your attention, our concerns as our liaison, it's, it seems like it's falling on deaf ears to the county and to almost everybody else concerned. Um, we have discussed this, as I said, at our CAC meeting for a number of years, and we've known that this was coming, and we appreciate the fact that they you know, want to repave the road. It's a long overdue project. But to suddenly try to urbanize North Sea, that's not the community that we are. We don't live in an urban area. We live in the country, and that's the way we want North Sea to remain. To repave the road, put in nice wide shoulders where people can walk or bike at their leisure, that's fine, but putting in these sidewalks, if you walk, there's a business that's on North Sea Road right now where because it's a new business, they had to have sidewalks put in, and now their workers are now parking on what little shoulder there is. When they open their car door, they're opening it onto traffic. That's what all of North Sea Road is going to be like if you allow this to happen. That's not the community that we want, that's, and we're begging you as our representatives, this is our community, we live there, we need you to listen to us. And, and have respect for our community and help us to stop the urbanization that the county is trying to do to us. This is not what Southampton, this is not what North Sea is all about. So I implore you to, um, you know, to work on this and to please try to help us. Um, it's my understanding that um, Nick Caracapa had made a statement that there are others who do want sidewalks, so let them have it. Why are we spending $16.5 million on a, an area that doesn't want sidewalks. There are other communities that rightfully need it. It's not us. We don't need this. Um, so the uh, uh, let's see. So we are asking the board to support the North Sea community and protect our way of life, and that we do not want to urbanize our road and our hamlet with unnecessary sidewalks. I know that in the past, um, I think that you, as a town, have taken over. Was it a state road? Was it Noyak Road that you took over control of? Maybe that's something that the town needs 30 to consider. Seconds. Take control of North Sea Road, let them repave it, and then let us as a community decide what is best for our community. We should not be dictated to by what's happening at the county level. This is not Western Suffolk County. Thank you for your time, and we appreciate your help in helping us solve this problem. Thank you. Thank you, Sever. Okay, uh, Amy Paradise, you're next, followed by Perry Yo. Hi there, uh, Amy Paradise. Um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you could knock me over a feather when I saw the Ellis Squires house on the list of resolutions. The historic uh, society has heard absolutely nothing. I've heard not a word despite, I, I've lost track over the years how many times I've raised the subject of that house. I tried to find the person who supposedly had the uh, stewardship agreement and never could track him down. Tell me something good is going to happen. Yes. That's why we're yes. doing it. <laughs> yeah, so what, what we're doing there, so it's a CP, that CPF program didn't buy that house. I the know, CPA it was bought with affordable the housing land. funds and crazy stuff. I don't know if it was affordable housing, but we bought, Something the CPF bought different. the land adjoining it, mm -hmm. and the house was just regular funds. I think they were going to maybe try to sell the house to somebody, and maybe, anyway, Nothing really ever happened, and then the, the town did enter into a stewardship agreement with the Peconic years. Preservation, that's Robert Strada's group, mm -hmm. and they tried to get grant money to restore it, because it's a really important house, as you know. It's the oldest house in Hampton Bays. Don't get me going on it. <laughs> and it, and, and it's on the, they actually succeeded that group. They did something. They, they got, got it, it on the on national register. register. So, um, but they were trying to get grant, you know, and they went to Gardner Foundation, which doesn't like to give grants to, unless you own it. So uh, they, don't, they don't usually give grants to municipalities. So that group <coughs> wanted us to give it to them. And 
ultimately we decided not to do that um, but the, the hearing we held a public hearing actually like a year ago <coughs> a, on this to end that relationship amicably with the Missed student that one. yeah and to give the property to the CPF department CPF department can actually do the full restoration which we estimate to be about a million dollars on this property started out as 300,000 but 13 or 14 years it's, do a lot it's of damage. likely over a million dollars to restore it to do it accurately mm -hmm. and that is the town's plan that we will um, we will end the stewardship agreement give the property to CPF program and have CPF pay to do a full historic restoration there so this will have a happy ending um, it's it's a good thing. And it's cool. I'd like to see it kind of used like the Halleck Farm in Riverhead for mm -hmm. events, that kind of well, stuff. We, you, we can talk about that, but uh, you know, what when Lisa Combrick, our CPF program manager, she presented at the hearing, which you can watch, and she did a very good job. But we never did the authorizing resolution, and it's unfortunate because that property really. Um, hasn't been properly cared for and, and, and it's disturbing we are going to fix that and we'll clean it up and we'll make it a beautiful homestead again so but uh my okay. apologies though for not you know we should have moved this sooner but we're getting to it tonight okay and a, a quick thing because of all these other discussions um i'm on the cac and the civic I'm a dissenting member. I don't think you need to do moratoriums on BESS. I think, see, you've signed this agreement with a NYSERDA, and I think the canal site is perfect. I think the one west of town has a lot of problems. I think I was at a planning board meeting. I've been to so many meetings, I've forgotten where I heard all the information. But just so you know, that the entire town of Hampton Bays is not reacting negatively to the possibility of BESS. It's, it's a really, the state has this environmental program that we're supposed to be engaging in, the climate committee. We're all supposed to be kind of lining up and moving together on that. And there's a tree hugger. Go for it. Uh, thank you, Amy. I thank appreciate you, Amy. that. Um, all right, so Perry Guio, if I'm saying that right. Yes. Um, and followed by, um, this one's more challenging, uh, Burkhan Akis? Yeah. Oh. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight, uh, Supervisor and the board. I, uh, my name is Perry Gio. I'm a landscape architect. I live uh, on North Sea Road. Um, and I'm here tonight to speak uh, with my neighbors who have voiced the opposition to the details of the project about the expansion and of uh, the width of North Sea Road with the sidewalk uh, proposal. Um, it's a road that myself and neighbors use uh, a great extent as the link to the village and uh, it's understood the way we've used it is it's our notion of what uh, the essence of Southampton and our community feels like and it it's uh, sprinkled with local businesses that we use regularly I meet here tonight uh, this gentleman has the transmission shop we've never sat next to each other for anything but I go to him all the time there's the two delis there's Mahoney's plumbing there's Leo's electric there's Joe's garage it sounds like a lot, but it's very, very small knit community about that. In between those businesses are stretches of undeveloped land. There's the two delis uh, and small modest houses that link uh, starting with the cemetery and going up. And it's a throwback road and it's lovely. And it's been that way for as older than the uh, village, in fact. Um, I've said it before and wrote a letter to the newspaper that my vast appreciation for that stretch of, of real estate is in fact in 1640 when the colonists came from Lynn in that June uh, week they landed in the harbor there and they took a Indian trail that is in fact the oldest road in all of Long Island not including the Dutch were in Manhattan but the English came down and used a little trail through the woods of native oaks and 
viburnum shrubs and found their way and settled in what is considered Old Town, and that's when the beginning of Southampton. But of course things change, and of course things build up, but it seems like for 300, nearly 300 years, this road has existed and its lovely sort of serendipity of sprinkled of businesses and small homes and local community kind of activities. Seconds. And it seems a vast overreach that we would find out from our county that they would take advantage of a situation and push it ahead far, far than it, than it needs to be. Um, there's not a vast uh, need for people walking on sidewalks there. Myself, like my neighbors, we realize it should be repaved, and it seems like uh, an addition of a, an improved shoulder would facilitate bike lanes and, and make it far easier for the businesses in that part of the area to, to function. It just physically doesn't seem to lend itself for that kind of expansion. And I appreciate your time tonight, and uh, we need your help to be part of our voice as our neighborhood to, to think about this and to see more of a nuanced approach that's not just sort of coming in and turning this into a piece of suburban real estate that doesn't have a touch and a feel for the, for the community. And you would think the county and uh, Mrs. Fleming would, would see things that way, but they haven't, and we're asking for your help. I appreciate it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, all right, let's bring the last speaker. I do want to say something on this issue. Um, this is the last speaker we have, but then we do have may have people online too. But uh, is it Gurkhan? Yeah, this is Gurkhan. Uh, my name is Gurkhan Akish. Uh, I have 1273 North Sea Road as a mechanic shop owner. I'm sorry, so my language is a little bit broken English. I have the broken English, and my yeah. wife is explained to the everything. We can understand you fine. <laughs> and, okay. And actually, you know, the problem is on the uh, County Road 38, is North Sea Road, is a sidewalk, and uh, also, you know, they make a try to wider uh, road. But is that area is this business area, North Sea Tavern, the my shop, and across the liquor store, and also, you know, the Fresh Deli. We measure that, you know, the it's on the deli, the my property area is 60 feet is almost my front to the door and also you know the front to the deli and sidewalk everything is show up you know the I, I don't have a parking spot because that building is 1929 and that time probably you know the just to that road is a horse trailer stuff something survey is very close to my building and if they're gonna do the 60 feet wider road, and right now the 25 foot is concrete road, and they're gonna put the six, seven foot is both side bike road, and other four feet is uh, <coughs> sidewalk, it's gonna be, minimum is gonna be making another you know, 55 foot. 55 foot is right now that area, commercial area, is front to the deli door, between almost my, my door area. And ha they show up the last Friday, uh, Thursday, they make the meeting is on the fire, uh, Mercy <coughs> Firehouse. They show up the different picture and the project is different. And he doesn't know what they're gonna do over there. If it's gonna be, they, if they do, you know, the same project on, the, you know, this, they show up to plan, is affect my business is more than 50%. I have to be closed to shut down to my business or what I'm going to do to that building. I don't know. I spend the, I spend the, you know a lot of money to buy the building 19 uh, 2013. Right now is my business shut down. If they get after the, this project. Can I just interrupt and uh, go in? If you just identify who your name, yeah. Uh, my name is Vana Oskian. Uh, I'm his wife. Um, I would like to say that because we what have What is your first name? Vana. Vana? Yes. B-A-N-A? B-A-N-U. B-A-N-U. Okay. So um, he's trying to say that they said that they're going to give us the driveway as far as going into the shop from the both side of the uh, base.
But the problem is we get tow trucks all the time. So tow truck is not going to be able to go in front of the shop with the uh, 20 foot driveway. So we're going to lose a lot of business. I mean, during the construction, I'm not even talking about the construction time. They're saying about like fall of 2024. Um, but as far as now that the plan that we saw and the, um, the as far as the footage of the uh, road, it's not gonna, I don't think it's not gonna be like efficiency for that. Can I ask who at the county you're talking to? Uh, there county was a, engineer. there was a county engineer last Bill week Hillman. on the meeting. Bill Hillman. 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 Okay. So they said that they're gonna come one day to the front of the shop and they're gonna see it with their own eyes, but I mean. That's good, I'm, Bill is a professional and I've worked with him a I lot. I mean, the thing is with the curves front of the shop, it's gonna be a problem for us. I mean, right now there's so many accidents I happening over there too. I will convey that also to Also Bill, other Mr. business Hillman. too, other business is not here right now because B doesn't know that it's gonna be, you know, that tonight is gonna be, be coming in. Probably is we gotta come back again and it is the all business owner that area and because that project is affect us too much right okay it's important that you your concerns get heard by the county no doubt so uh, th thank you for that and thank I will, you I will also reach out to the county executive and make sure which exactly is your um, repair shop 1273 North across from the ambulance barn across from the ambulance all transmission yes Shop. The new, the new one. Post, yeah. <laughs> on the opposite side of the yes. street? Yes. Yes. By the, at the restaurant. Next to Norsey Tavern. Next to the next next to Tavern. Tavern yeah. Which is, is that what it's called these days? Norsey Tavern? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Yeah. So you can, you can sit. That's, Thank that's, you. That's, Thank you. Thank you. So let, let me say a couple things on this because a number of people spoke on this, right? Obviously, it's, it's not the town's initiative. This is a county project, a county road. And we're here, you know, I haven't heard anyone say they want sidewalks. Nobody wants sidewalks uh, there. <laughs> Nobody needs sidewalks there. Nobody walks there. I've never seen anybody walking there. Um, everybody wants that road repaved. It is a mess. It's got like a concrete slab over a portion of it and then asphalt, and it should all be just asphalted. We do want bike lanes because more and more people are using bikes. Um, and we want that bike lanes clearly marked. Um, that piece of legislation, which I was at the county at that point, with the complete streets, it's a good idea. You know, the county is a big county, but not all of it is the same. There are a lot of very suburban areas of Suffolk County. Suffolk County is a million and a half people, and it's largely residential. And this idea is when the county's redoing a road, you need to analyze it and see if you can get sidewalks in and see if you can get bike lanes in these, this idea of complete streets. You know, we're not suburban, we're rural. You know, so when we work on legislation for the whole county, it's understood that some areas it doesn't really make sense. It's more agricultural out here. And there is a provision in that law that basically says if there's community opposition, you don't do it. You don't do it. And I will certainly convey to the county executive that there is strong community opposition to the sidewalk. There's strong support for the repaving and for the bike lanes, but but not for the sidewalk. And Look, they're professionals over there. Um, Bill Hillman is a very good engineer. That whole DPW, I've worked with them on a lot of projects and they are responsive. So don't don't give up here. Then I don't think they're gonna try to cram anything down the community's throat. Um, and I know Cindy is gonna convey the same message. You do also do have county representatives um, besides the county executive legislator, Bridget Fleming. Um, and I know that you're not just talking to us, you're talking to them as well and I think that's uh, that's really important, but we will, uh, you know, we can send a letter on, on behalf of the town board um, saying that the community is opposed to the sidewalks because nobody has told me they want sidewalks. But, um, you know, 2024, getting that, it, that's almost too long to wait for the repaving, but we, we need to get that road repaved. So, all right? All right. Um, Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Cindy, you want to work with me on the letter? Absolutely. We'll put, we'll put that together and we'll get that out. All right. Um, we'll get, we, we still have folks po possibly online who want to be heard, too. So, <laughs> Charles, do you have anybody indicating they want to be heard in public portion? Yes, I have one. Okay. 
Just one. <laughs> Could be worse. <laughs> All right, let's bring them on. Until they realize that we're talking to people online. <laughs> Oh, Ray Claire. There's a Ray on every CAC. This is North Seas Ray. Really? Yeah. It's mandatory that we it's have mandatory. one Ray on every CAC. It's Ray Claire. You can speak. <laughs> Ray? <laughs> That's all you're going to see, Ray. <laughs> Ray, we don't hear you. You may be muted. We see parts of you. <laughs> the top parts. Still can't hear you, Ray. We still can't hear you. You're probably saying really great stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> you've got quite a bit of glare on the left side of your head. There you go. We still don't hear you, though. Can Charles unmute him? You've probably made your point at this point, but this is the wonders of technology. <laughs> oh, we lost it. I don't know. I suppose we can have him call a phone number and I can put it on speaker. <laughs> Give out your number. I can pretty much tell you what Ray is going to say. <laughs> Anybody have Ray's number? Ray's going to say he knows sidewalks. Myron, call Ray. Well, wait a minute. There was a chat up there. Wait a minute. Maybe you can chat. And then you ha you can put your phone on speaker. I can. And, put it and bring it to the podium. <laughs> that wasn't up. <laughs> this is called improv. Although Verizon's been down almost all day today. So it was you too. Oh, good. I thought it was me. I got a new phone, so and I thought I lost me. my I thought I lost my service. We, we could have Cindy say what Ray is going to say, and Ray could just simply nod. Ray is going to say no sidewalks. Right, Ray, Ray? Ray, not if you can hear us. Wait, wait, it's pulling out his cell phone. Because <laughs> it's ringing. There you go. <laughs> Myron, you're going to you're gonna have to bring it up to the microphone. All right, one second, Ray. It's Myron. You're on All right. speakerphone, Ray. You're on speakerphone. You're, you're, you're look, look Technology, at what a thing. <laughs> Here we go. Good evening, but they can't get me. All right, you can speak now, Ray. Good evening, good evening, board. Thanks for letting me talk. Uh, North East Road Project. The North East Road South. Road South. North East Road South Hampton. Oh, we got it's it. Home for the landing. Yeah. You put the phone down. Landing there. place of the first English settlement in New York, and to the largest estates in Southampton Town. And before I continue something, and I forget it, the CPF property where Jed East was and the highway garage need to be cleaned up. They're both disgraceful walking. Okay? Now I'll we'll continue with North Sea Road. Uh, right. You can put your phone down. Dorsey <laughs> Road. Ray, you, you can put your phone down. Dorsey uh, Road has businesses that go back to the 1930s. He's blocky the clear, leave it. <laughs> and the new generation businesses that already have sidewalks. The old the old businesses are going to be around for a long time. As you know from reading the road plans, the new shoulders are going to be six foot wide. The shoulders should be 10 feet wide. Trucks and trailers are eight foot wide. Residents and businesses need to get delivery. Nancy Road is the only place for trucks that can park and get food before they go up on the sunrise. Residents and the people that come out here to work every day have the right to eat. And parking is needed. The area 
the area of Southampton, zip 119. This area of Southampton is extremely wealthy. You lose them again? This is an extremely wealthy place. Today, the North Sea Road plans don't cut it. The road should be upgraded. Wide shoulders, tree lined streets, lighting. It should look as good as any place in the village. Many, many commuters vote in Southampton. Remember, it's North Sea Road, Southampton. It reflects on you. You are the South you are Southampton. Thirty seconds. Okay. <laughs> the last administration approved a death row thirty nine. So if if it can't be done right, don't do it. Leave North Sea Road the way it is. Just repave it. Say good night, Gracie. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ray. I'm sorry I couldn't get you on the computer. No, you so worked we, out. We got you. We got you. We you're, 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 okay, you know I, you know what my thoughts are. No, it was loud and clear. Thank you, Ray. Thank you very yeah. much. Bye. <laughs> we love Ray. <laughs> okay. Um, Linda, you can speak. Linda Wells is up next. Linda, we cannot hear you yet, so I don't know if it's your end or our end. Interesting, thank you. There you go. I got you. Um, Linda Wells, 20 Cemetery Road, Hampton Bays. Um, I was remiss. I, I meant to email Supervisor Schneiderman and the board thanking you all for taking the time to listen to our concerns about resolution uh, 2023 666 and I don't know if this is the appropriate time to talk about the new one 2023 709 or if you're going to take that up a little later uh, this is fine this is public portion you can talk about it now I was just a little confused uh, it appears from the agenda that 666 is still up for consideration is is that so or is it just 709 now yeah so we're 666 is going to be withdrawn Okay. And 709 uh, hopefully will be approved. Okay, so, that was my only concern. I just didn't understand. Originally, the plan was to amend 666, but in, <laughs> for clarity, we decided to introduce a brand new resolution. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if it it's been where I really wanted to go, but I really appreciate your listening to us and for to making the effort to, I think what you want to do is enlarge the area find another spot for a sewage treatment plant. So yeah. thank you all very much. And, and just I know I don't have but a couple of minutes to talk, but it was really hard <coughs> to hear all of those other nice people from another neighborhood talk about how in the last couple of weeks they felt like there was something pressing on their chests when they found out that there was going to be a sewage treatment plant in their neighborhood. My husband and I and my niece are the only living people right next door to where the sewage treatment plant was planted. And can you imagine, it was, it's been like a mountain on our chests for a couple of years. And for quite a while, when we found out about it, we felt, even though we approached some members of the board, we were just talking in an echo chamber. So when finally all those nice people came to the HBAC meeting last year, I think a large part of their complaint was they finally found out about this. And I don't know, of the meetings, uh, Supervisor Scheinman, thank you for having those meetings last year. Um, many people said, no, I don't remember anybody saying they thought it was a good idea there. So it, it was like a breath, our neighbors came um, in large measure to our rescue. And because of that, I think we really got heard. Uh, Supervisor Scheinman, you had a meeting with me and my husband, we appreciate it. So thank you. Uh, I think the rock is finally gonna come off our chest um, we hope so. And 30 seconds. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Okay. Um, Charles, do we have anyone else online? No, sir. Okay. Um, is there anyone else here who did not speak who wished to be heard?
good. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to close public portion. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Get home safely, everybody. I don't get it. We, we still have a whole agenda get to get through. <laughs> All right. We'll see how fast we can read, right? Clear the room. Well, we got to get the conversation out of the room. All right, folks. Um, yeah. We still have to get. We're not done. We're not done. Thank you. Thank you guys very much for We spoke by phone, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Your expression was. Did they really find this out? Because it was, when I looked at it again on video, I didn't think I could take any point by surprise. What was that? What was I starting with? When I first, I didn't intend to speak. I thought there would be others behind me. There was no, no army. I thought, let's go inside. say something. And then when I brought up one Bowers, I was surprised. But the look on your face was... Recorded by everyone. Yeah, <laughs> like right it is right now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll have to go watch that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to uh, town board resolutions. We are going to start with 640 of 23. And Councilman Bouvier, if you'll read it. Town Board Resolution 640 of 2023 is uh, co-sponsored with Councilwoman McNamara, Councilman Schiavone, and Councilman Martell to authorize reallocation of W Clip funding from Flying Point Comfort Station to Hot Dog Beach Comfort Station. Second. Seconded by <laughs> Councilman Martell. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Um, are you staying for any of them? You're go you guys are going, right? Do we Thanks. have to take anything out? No. No, no. Good if night. you wanted to take anything out of order, I would, but that's that's fine. <laughs> okay. Run while you can. Sean and Dave, <laughs> you're on the you're the next one. Yeah. Well, that works out great. Um. So, this is six 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 six, six, six um, is the one where we're drawing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, I mean, we couldn't withdraw this earlier because it had been tabled. So um, it had to be in the packet, but I'd like to withdraw. Uh, because this is co-sponsored with all of us, can we all, is there anyone who disagrees with it being withdrawn? No. 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 All right, hearing none, uh, Madam Clerk, would you consider 666 of 23 withdrawn? Yes. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, Councilman Schiavone, the next one is you. Town Board Resolution 682 of 2023. This is a uh, co-sponsor with Councilman Martel. This is a resolution of adoption uh, to amend Town Code 283. We actually have two iterations of this particular legislation, and we are going to be withdrawing uh, both, re both of these uh, resolutions and submitting another one so that the community can take a good, long look at this. Um, we've had... Uh, different committees uh, indicate that they uh, would like to see it and would like a little bit more time with it, as have members of the board. So it'll be withdrawn. Well, you, it will be withdrawn? It, or you it are is, withdrawing. I'm withdrawing it. Withdrawing. Withdrawing. All right. And, yes. and yes. Councilman Martel, you're the co-sponsor. You're both agreeing to yes. withdraw. Madam Clerk, sorry, would you no. note that 682 yeah. is withdrawn? Okay. We'll we'll have to vote um, withdrawal. And the other one we didn't walk on. Yeah. Right. Left. And the other one doesn't have to be withdrawn because it wasn't walked on. Yes. Right. That's correct. Okay. Um, Sean, is there anything else you're waiting on? No. What? That's all I have. To okay, excellent. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. All right, so um, I'm on page 23, 709 of 2023, co sponsored with all of you, authorizes the supervisor to enter into an agreement with Hayduck Engineering. LLC for professional engineering services in connection with the preparation of a feasibility study uh, to service the business district of Hampton Bays. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. And yeah, this specifically says we will look at the transfer station and that we have already considered the, the site at uh, near the cemetery. So that is not something that we're looking at. We're looking at other properties. All right. Um, any discussion on this? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. Town right. Board Resolution 710 of 2023, uh, accept award and authorize supervisor to execute a contract with the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, NYSERDA, a just transition pro program action grant for clean energy. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 711 of 2023, co sponsor of Councilman Schiavone, to authorize a sur survey for printed properties located at 3398 Noyak Road and 146 uh, Old Noyak Road. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 712 of 2023, authorize a supervisor to sign a, con supervisor to sign a contract with Blaze Stack Incorporated. For their software as a service solution to manage the fire marshal's operations. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 713 of 2023 authorized supervisor to sign a contract with GoGov Incorporated doing business as GoGov to utilize cloud based software solutions to manage town clerk operations. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 714. Co-sponsor with Councilman Schiavone is authorized the supervisor to sign an amended contract with Green Velvet Trees Incorporated for trail uh, maintenance. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 I approve. 715 of 2023. Co-sponsor with Councilman Schiavone. Authorized supervisor to sign contract extension with Commander Electric Inc. for South Anthem Volunteer Ambulance Flashing Beacon. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 716 of 2023 authorized the purchase of motor fuels from the Omnia Partners Cooperative Contract with Truman Arnold Companies. Second. Second by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 717 of 23. Authorized the supervisor to execute a 2023 service and maintenance agreement with Best Climate Control and Maintenance and Service on the air conditioning and or heating equipment at Southampton Town Police Department. Second. I think it should say air conditioning. Air conditioning. But uh, it uh, doesn't matter. Well, Seconded by, I'm sorry, who was the second? Uh, Councilman yeah. Schiavone, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, Sunday, if you want to correct that, Scrivener's error, that's sure. fine. Town Board Resolution 718 of 2023, co sponsored with Councilwoman McNamara, authorized to supervise and execute a consulting contract amendment with H2M Architects, Engineers, Land Surveying, and Landscape Architecture, DPC, for rehabilitation of the Bellows Pond Road elevated storage tank. Second. Um, a second by Councilwoman McNamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 719 of 2023 authorizes supervisor to execute a contract with Suffolk County Office for the Aging for expanded in home services for the elderly. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 720 of 23, authorized supervisor to execute any and all documents pertaining to the 2023 transportation contract with Suffolk County Office of the Aging. Second. Seconded by Councilman McNamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 721 of 2023 to authorize the supervisor to renew agreement with eScope Solutions Incorporated for IT services. Second. Second by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 722 of 23. Authorized the supervisor to sign an amended contract with Hampton Hopper LLC for shuttle services associated with the South Fork Community Connection. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 723 of 2023, co sponsored with Councilman Schiavone and Councilwoman McNamara, authorized supplemental funding for WQIP of Alewife Creek Stormwater and Restoration Project. Second. Seconded by uh, Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution uh, 724 of 2023 to award and authorize supervisor to sign a contract for 2023 Silverado 1500 crew RST four wheel drive with Buzz Chew Chevrolet Cadillac Incorporated. Second. Second is by Councilman McNamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Re Resolution 725 of 2023, co sponsored with Council of Givonis, to award and authorize supervisor to sign contract for invasive vegetative control and removal with Coastal Community Property Management Incorporated. Second. Second by Councilman Scrivoni. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 726 of 2023, co-sponsored with Councilwoman McNamara's award and authorized supervisor to sign contract for two 
2022 Ford F-350 SRW 4x4 Super Cab with Otis Ford Incorporated. Second. Seconded by Councilman McNamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 727 of 2023, award and authorize the supervisor to sign a contract for 2022 Ford F-250 Super Duty with Open U Utility <laughs> Service Body with Open Focus Ford Incorporated. Say that. Twice. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martel. All favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 728 of 2023, award and authorize the supervisor to sign a contract with Easton Architect LLP for architectural and engineering services for Tupper Boathouse. Well, nice to see this moving along. So yes. Who's the second here? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman McNamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 2023-729, uh, authorize the supervisor to execute any and all documents pertaining to the Port Security Grant for use in the Bay Constable Division. Second. Second. Seconded by Councilman McNamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 730 of 2023, the 2023 notice to bidders for Alewife Creek Habitat Enhancement Program. Second. Right. Project. It's okay. Project. Second. Ooh, seconded by Councilwoman McNamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 731 of 23 notice. 2023 notice to bidders for Round Pond Stormwater Improvements. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 732 of 2023. Um, 2022 fund balance allocation for capital borrowing as it relates to debt reduction policy. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Um, Dave, is there something you want me to take out of order to get you home? If you can, sure. Which um, number? We're almost there. On, uh, walk on resolution? We're almost there. Oh, good. Just go. Just oh, we really? Uh, oh, we're, we're almost there because there's a lot of. Because yeah. we, yeah, we haven't walked notices. the walk on. Um, it still looks like a lot behind us. It's not. But it's it's a, not. Okay. It's actually a big. All right. Yeah, I think so. All right. So, uh, sorry, Dave. 733 sorry, Dave. of 2023, accept payment from Reckless Equity Development LLC for capital project subaqueous crossing debt reduction. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 734 of 23, amendment 23, adopted budget for purchase of Bay Constable vehicle. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman McNamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 735 of 23, co sponsored with Councilman Schiavone, Flanders Northampton Volunteer Ambulance Company Service Award Program. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 736 of 2023, reappoint Stephanie Davis to Landmarks and Historic Districts Board. Second. Seconded by uh, Councilman McNamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 737 of 2023. Appoint Stephanie Davis Vice Chair of the Landmarks and Historic District Board for 2023. Second. Seconded by Councilman McNamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 738. Appoint Edward Wisnowski Chair of the Landmarks and Historic District Board for 2023. Second. Second. Seconded by uh, Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approval. Approved. And thank you to all those, Stephanie and to Ed, for their great work. Yeah, um, we're doing a lot of good work at board. Um, 739 of 23, a resolution to authorize eminent domain proceedings for the acquisition of property necessary for the improvement of a portion of Shinnecock Hills Road and Arbutus Road, Shinnecock Hills. Second. Seconded by Councilman McNamara. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Um, 740 of 23, co sponsored with Councilman Schiavone. Resolution of adoption amending Town Code 330 77 to increase the permitted required year yard lot coverage percentage. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier um, on the motion. Everybody okay with this? This goes from 20% to 50%, but doesn't increase the total coverage of the lot. Just allows people to use their backyards. Yep. Yes. No discussion. All right. I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 741 of 2023, Resolution of Adoption, Amending Town Code Chapter 316, Vehicles Junked and Abandoned in Order to Enhance Enforcement Ability. Second. Second by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Page 
page 59. Right. I, I see it's 742-2023 accepts workforce housing payment for Canoe Place in Canal Eastern Maritime Plan Development District, Hampton Bays. It's quite a bit, it's $520,086.43 that will go into the housing fund. Um, that's from the original PDD approval. Second. Seconded by Councilman Scavoni, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, approved. Town Board Resolution 743, authorization of cost reimbursement waiver for the East Park Fire Department Memorial Day Parade on May 28, 2023 to 12 p.m. to, from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. co-sponsored with Councilman Scavoni and Councilwoman McNamara. Second. Second by Councilwoman McNamara. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Can't we let Dave go home? Let's, can we just take those resolutions out? We're there. He's we're next. there. 744. Just Sanitary flow credits are coming. Is that the one that That's you're here it. for? Yeah. Not the one in. Uh, well, there's a walk-on, but there's, there's a withdrawal. Right. So, all right. So let's let's do the both both parts then. All right. So so we are then at 744, which is the withdrawal, authorizing the supervisor to sign documents for the transfer of sanitary flow. Credits as it relates to the site plan special exemption for 33010 New York Road, Noyak. Now, in the walk on packet. The, yeah, there's in the walk on package, it's got different sponsors. It's number six. And it's, where's my walk on? Oh, here's my walk on packet. All right, so it's number six in the walk on packet? Yes. All right, so can. Uh, um, I will withdraw 744. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you consider 744-23 withdrawn? I'll make a motion to take 434446 out of order. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. I'll make uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, we'll make a motion to approve 43446, co-sponsored with Councilman Schiavone. Authorize the supervisor to sign documents for the transfer of sanitary flow credits as it relates to the affordable housing site plan special exemption for 3310 Noyak Road There's LLC. There's an issue here. It has different sponsors. So what, it was confusing. I don't so know it's booby. Uh, yeah, you should. Oh, so it's actually your resolution. I read it. I well, should not yeah, have read but it. But it's, it, no, this is correct. I, I read it. You read but it off of here, right? I read it, but it is. It's oh, okay. you yeah. and well, Tommy John. I just want to make sure it was right. So you're going to make a problem for okay. a process. So go ahead. You're making the motion to approve. I am making the motion to approve. And, and the councilman. Four, three, four, four, six. Second. And councilman Schiavone is second. Um, any question on this? This is, uh, I guess, what, eight units of affordable housing in two buildings up in Noy Yes, Noyak. Mr. Supervisor. They're proposing two uh, buildings of eight units. I'm, so, I'm sorry, two buildings of four units of affordable housing in each building for a total of eight affordable housing units. Um, the reason we did the substitution and the walk-on was that the original properties that I had identified had not been banked by the town board for their development rights. So I had previous to find town properties. Board. Can, can a I previous town board. A uh, previous town board, yes. Can actually. I ask you, um, is this a one-for-one one or do we... Like these apartment, like we preserve lots of open space. It would have been big houses, and instead we're getting apartments. So, uh, it, how do I? Is it the same it? credit for a house as it would be for a percentage of credit? I don't want to wipe out a full based credit. Based on the flow, to create yeah. an apartment. Madam Clerk, there's some uh, photos. That, oh, you did pass them down. It's based on the flow, right? Yes. So it's based on the flow. It's not based on the number of development rights. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, so it's commensurate number of credits based on the flow. Correct. What I mean. Okay. I wanted to make sure because these they're valuable. These credits they can only be used for affordable housing, but we want to make sure we have them when we you need too. it. Correct. That's why I do it based on the gallonage. If we did it by the development rights, we would be giving up a lot of property. So yeah, they, need, they need 942 gallons. I found two properties that yield 966 gallons, uh, which is as close as I could get mm. it without um, going over, going too far over. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, and you know, we are talking about amending the assessor department law too, which currently requires a 
uh, oh, elimination of a credit. Yeah, but these aren't accessory apartments. These I are, know, I, okay. I understand that, but I that's the same type of issue where I don't want to, we're wiping out a full credit for one apartment. Correct. We have, we have to change that. Yeah. And for the public certification, the zoning on this, they are within our code? Yes, this, the eight units of affordable housing mm -hmm. and the existing single family home that will remain complies with the zoning. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Okay. Okay, thank you. Stay home safely. All right, 745 of 2023, authorize the waiver of fees for the Southampton Fire District. Second. Second. Seconded by Cindy McNamara. <laughs> who wants to be the second? Cindy, Cindy McNamara. Councilwoman McNamara. All right. Uh, I only said it because there was pause. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was. Yeah. And we want to go home. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. <laughs> 746 of 23, release of performance bond in connection with the planned residential development cluster plan of Mill Creek Heights, a.k.a. Sag Harbor Woods, Noyak. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 747 of 2023, Junkyard Permits. Second. Seconded by Councilman McNamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Aye. 748 of 23 is 23 part-time salaries. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 749 of 23 accepts resignation of a senior office assistant in municipal works. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 750 of 2023. Accept resignation of a senior senior office assistant in police department. Second. Second by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. I approve. 751 accepts resignation of a heavy equipment operator in highway department. Second. Second by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I approve. 752 uh, appoints Maria Cabrera to custodial worker one position in municipal works. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman McNamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 I approve. Aye. 753 of 23 appoints Tracy Coulson to Youth Services Coordinator position in Youth Service, in Youth Bureau. Second. Um, seconded by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I approved and congratulations to Tracy, who now will be heading up this department. He's worked there quite a number of years. And uh, um, we're all familiar with Tracy, so um, I'm sure he'll do a great job there. Um, that was, we voted? Yep. Yes. Uh, 754 of 23, authorize attendance at the Police Executive Research Forum uh, annual meeting in New York City from July 17th through July 19th of 23. Um all right, that's uh, seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 755 of 23 authorized drug court judge and personnel to attend the National Association of Drug Court Professionals Conference. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 756 of 23. Notice of public hearing to consider the acquisition of development rights at 771. And part of 791 Sagaponic Main Street, part of 135 Gibson Lane, 26 and part of 60 Daniels Lane, Village of Sagaponic, and to amend the CPF management and stewardship plan to include the properties. And um, Second. seconded by Councilman Bouvier, this is a, a $10 million purchase. It's uh, quite a bit of land. It's a uh, Total of 7.8 acres in a highly visible area. It is a horse farm uh, in Sagaponic on uh, Daniels Road, and uh, it's a beautiful piece of property Daniel, on Daniels Lane. I'm sorry. Uh, and so the hearing will be June 13th at 1 p.m. All right. We have motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 757 of 2023. Notice the public hearing to consider the inclusion of 140 West Montauk Highway 
into the Hampton Bays Park District. I'm going to withdraw this for now. I'm sorry, Rick, you're uh, withdrawing. We're withdrawing it. The sponsor is withdrawing the resolution. Thank you. Town Board, like, ready? Yeah, go ahead. Right. Town Board Resolution 758 of 2023, co-sponsored with Councilman Martell, it's a public hearing to amend Town Code Chapter 312-62 to implement a parking by permit only pilot program at Wildwood Lake Park for weekends and federal holidays, Memorial Day, June 10th, Independence Day, Labor Day from May 15th to September 15th for a one year period. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martell. This would be a June 13th hearing at 1 p.m. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 759 of 2023. Co sponsored with Councilman Schiavone and Councilman Martel. Authorized CPF acceptance of the transfer and donation of the Ellis Squires House property. Hampton Bays terminates stewardship agreement with Peconic Historic Preservation Inc. and amend CPF project plan and CPF stewardship. Uh, and management plan to include the property. Second. Uh, seconded by Councilman Martel. There was a hearing held on this uh, on March 22nd of 2022. Um, I did go back and watch that hearing because it was uh, over a year ago now. And uh, I think it's really important that we do this and we quickly move to restore this property. Uh, any discussion? Now we really need to get started on it right away. It's deteriorating rather quickly. Okay, so I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved to the walk-on packet. Um, we're up to 43178, uh, appointing James Cappers to Water District Superintendent in the Hampton Bays Water District. Second. And he did accept our offer. Um, seconded by Councilman Martell. Uh, just a word on this. Um, you know, James is, is relatively young, um, but uh, he plans on staying there for a long time. He has really proven himself as assistant director. He's been a real team player. He has helped us get through a period where we had a lot of challenges in the water district. And, uh, well, you know, the people in Hampton Bays, I think, are much better today than they, they had been. And uh, some of that certainly is thanks to James's leadership. So. Um, I think James will continue to do a great job, and it'll be nice to see him in that uh, superintendent position. Uh, anybody else? Before uh, James started very young, so don't be fooled by the age. He has, I think, 17 years in already. So I'm looking forward to uh, having him at the helm. All right. Anyone else? Uh, call the call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Approved. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Four three three six zero. Um, this is a promotion, promotes Police Detective Carter Coleman to rank of Sergeant uh, in Southampton Town Police Department. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. Um, it's nice to see uh, Carter advancing up in ranks. He's an excellent police officer, excellent detective, and I'm sure he'll make a great sergeant, which is an administrative post. Um, so uh, happy to support this. Um, call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Um, 43361 promotes police officer David Peters to rank of sergeant in South Hampton Town Police Department. Same second. Same second um, by Councilman Schiavone. Um, uh, I don't know P.O. Peters as well as I know uh, Carter Coleman, but um, this is at the advice of our police chief to, uh, to do this promotion. And I'm sure he'll make a great sergeant. So um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Right, 43362 um, promotes Sergeant Bill Kiernan, William Kiernan, to rank of lieutenant in South Hampton Town Police Department. Second. Seconded by uh, Councilman Schiavone. I, I do know uh, Sergeant Kiernan. He's doing a great job over there and uh, uh, had almost a perfect score, if not a perfect score, maybe it was a perfect score on the uh, lieutenant's exam. And uh, he's going to make an excellent lieutenant. So, um, Motion is second. Any comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 43439. Uh, does Tommy John, you want to read this? Wasn't walked on. We oh, we did out. this already? Yeah, we left that out. Right. This oh, was we left not this walked out. on. So. Thank you. I didn't mark it off. 
Um, six, we already did. Uh, well, yeah, we did. We already, which was, yeah, it yeah, would four. have been five, four, three, four, four, six. We took care of. So we're at four, three, four, five, five. We're calling amends town board resolution two oh two three dash five three seven, authorizing expenditure from restricted account for the Windsor Heart project. Second. Um, seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. And the last one, 43458, is um, warrant number 10, uh, CPF 10, capital 10, payroll liability. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. All right, that gets us to the end of the agenda. Uh, is there any other business? No. Other than wishing everybody um, a good Memorial Day and a safe Memorial Day and also to remember why we get the day off. It's not just to, to party and have fun, but to remember those uh, who gave their lives in uh, defense of our great nation. So, all right, um, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. All right. We are